Yes, yes, free smoke. We are here. We're back. My name is David Shans, uh, Social Proof Podcast. As you guys are coming on in, I want to share with you all um, that this is going to be an incredible, life-changing year, okay? An incredible, life-changing year. This is the one you want to share out with people. This is the one you want to share out with people because you don't want to miss this. There's a word that needs to go forth. I mean, my pastor back today pushed me a Mitch, okay? I'm about to give a sermon, okay? So, um, Jasmine, if you want to give like some, go on, preach, Pastor. If you want to give some of them, it's all good. Uh, welcome, 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 man. What I've found throughout this entrepreneurship journey is that there are some things that are missing in your steps to becoming successful. There's, you, you have this idea that's in your head and I'm going to win. I know you're gonna be winning in 2024 because 2023, you realize all the mistakes. You realize the issues that you had and you're willing to fix those moving forward. The challenge is we see that every year. Top of the year, end of the year, we, have, we say the same thing. This is going to be my year and it just don't be your year, but not because you're not gifted or talented or that you're not in the, uh, the right season but there's just a few things that are missing. There's not a hundred things that you need to fix to become successful. It's typically one or two. It's typically like you make a small tweak to something and it's up. So we're gonna talk about the missing links today. For one, it's clarity. I think one of the challenges people have is clarity. And not just on their goal, but who they are. And not just who they are, but what do you want to do? What do you want to be? If you can get a clear picture of who you want to become in your head, that will probably solve a lot of problems for everybody. And because we're not clear, when somebody comes with another opportunity, we start chasing that opportunity and we do that for three months and somebody else says, hey, but what about this over here? And because you're not clear on where you're going, you're just driving, you get lost. What if someone came to your house and said, hey, jump in the car with me. We are gonna go north. Where would you end up? Where, just, just comment in the chat. Where would you end up? If somebody said, jump in the car, we're about to go north. Who knows where you're gonna end up, okay? You could end up in Canada. You could end up in Virginia. You could, you could end up in Oregon. I don't know where you're at right now, but if you just went north, you could end up in a bad situation. You could be in a bad side of town. You could end up in the desert. You could be in the, you could you could end up in an alleyway driving north. And life will take you wherever it wants to take you. In in my experience, life itself does not have the best plans for you. If you just drift, Napoleon Hill, I want to say it was Napoleon Hill in the book uh, Outwitting the Devil, he talked about these people called drifters where they just wake up and go throughout their day and go to sleep and wake up the next day and go throughout their day. And whatever happens, that's what we respond to. That's how we react. And we end up wherever the world wants to take us. I'm telling you, we need to be clear. Now, if I come to your house and say, hey, we are going to Broad Street in Philadelphia, guess where we're gonna end up? in Philadelphia on Broad Street because we decided exactly where we were gonna go. And that makes all the things we should do next make sense. When you come out of the house, do we make a left or a right? Well, where's Broad Street? Where's Philadelphia? Well, we gotta make a left. We go that way. The reason we have so many issues with direction and just chasing rabbits everywhere is because we are not clear. So we are gonna have to get through um, identifying who you wanna become. We gotta, we gotta attack clarity. Next is coaching. You're gonna need some coaching, y'all. Someone to guide you. And it cuts the learning curve. That's really what we're here today. Y'all gonna to do some coaching today, right? Yeah. We're gonna do some coaching? Okay. We are gonna coach today because we've seen so many things from an entrepreneurial lens. If you ask a question, the question that you've been fighting with for the last three weeks, four weeks, three months, four months, three years, four years, if you ask Pushman Mr. the question, because he's been through it, he said, oh, you do this, this, and that, no problem. It'll save yourself so much time. That's why there's value in coaching. This is why I, I, I really don't like the fact that people attack the coaching industry, because if everybody stopped coaching, you'd have to figure it out yourself. It's no more of that. If I listen to all the people that said, um, you're, you're, you, I, 
we don't like social proof podcasts or I don't like the person that they had. If I listen to everybody, there will be a lot of lost people because there are some people that are taking notes. So we're going to provide some coaching. And I think you have everything you need, but maybe, maybe the missing link is the coaching. Next, we need community. We need some community, y'all. But not any community because I think everybody's a part of some sort of community but you need the right community that's conducive to your success if you find yourself in the right environment you will find yourself going in the right direction if you find yourself in the wrong environment you will find yourself going in the wrong direction I've been there I grew up in South Jersey I didn't grow up in the hood project housing but it's a small city mentality, small town mentality, where there's a lid on your success and not of what we can accomplish, but the way we think about it. If you got a nice used Honda Accord and you got some, some, uh, some a system in the back, you got a new CD player, we used to have to like take the CD off when we went in the store, it was a beautiful time. Or your CD flip, you put it in there. If you got all that, you successful. Nobody was talking about becoming a millionaire. I don't think I've ever had a conversation with my friends growing up on how to become a millionaire or even heard about passive income. What is that? Passive income? Well, it was my environment that, that decided what we do. In my town, we rap and sell weed. That's it. And everybody I know did one or both. But it was only because I was in that particular community. Then I moved to Atlanta. I found successful black people and I said, whoa, what is this? It wasn't even a how-to. It wasn't that I found a mentor. They said, hey, do this, this, and that. It was just seeing it like, yo, hold on, that's your Lambo? You own that? You said you're an author, right? You wrote your own book. I read books, but I never even thought in my head, how can I be the person on the cover? I never even thought about it until I come to an environment where I see these things happening and then your own mind starts to work. All y'all that are listening to this, conversation right now you guys are gonna like we're gonna open your mindset a little bit especially people do me a favor comment small town if you're from a small town comment small town in the chat i just need to know who i'm talking to but if you get in the right community i'm telling you and in this community is going to be three people you need mentors you need mentees and you need peers you need mentors mentees and you need peers mentors they can tell you all the stuff that's ahead of you they can tell you what they know because they've experienced it. You need some peer, you need some mentees though because the best way to uh, learn is to teach. So if my mentor teaches me something and I go teach it to my mentee, it sticks with me. So a mentor says something and you will lose it by the night. But if you go on live instantly, you start teaching it to the people that are listening to you, it cements it in your brain. And if you're teaching mentees how to become successful, there's a little bit of added pressure there's a little bit of added pressure to stay motivated, to keep progression. I cannot tell my younger cousins that you got to keep going and keep fighting and keep working and be innovative. And I don't keep working. I'm not being innovative. That's the that has been a lot of the motivation for me, not my mentors, but the things I told my mentees and anyone can have a mentee. If you have if you graduated college. You need to be able to teach high school students how to get out of high school. There's always somebody you can teach. So you got to be in the right community. You're also going to need some conviction. And today we are going to break down all of these conversations that I'm having right now. So just take your notes and you can fill it in later. But you're going to need some conviction. And hopefully my guests today can teach you all how to have conviction because I have no idea how to do that. Sheesh. I don't know how to teach somebody how to have a firm belief in something and have your actions aligned with, with what you say you believe. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to teach someone to know that they are special. I don't know. So hopefully uh, we can have a conversation around that and we can spark something so you can leave this conversation with some conviction. Next, we need conditioning. Your environment will change you before you change it. Whatever happens in your environment will condition you in a way. No idea you had, came. you came up with it your own. There's all these things that are planted in our brains that create our belief. If I walk up to you right now and I say, you see that girl across the street? Her breath stank. <laughs> Whether that's true or not, when you see that girl, what do you think of? Her breath stank. You ain't gonna get too close. 
You're not gonna be inhaling too deeply when you get over there. I planted that in your head. And guess what? For the rest of your knowing her, if that was your first experience, you will always be expecting some sort of, was that? Today she off? <laughs> Am I right? Whether it's right or wrong, anything planted in your brain, right or wrong, true or false, lie or whatever, it plants, it starts to condition your brain to move in a certain direction. Have you ever heard someone say something bad about somebody and because you don't want to judge them, you don't know them, you're like, I'm not maybe, I'm, I'm not going to like start blasting about that person. But in your mind, you're thinking, whoa, that's crazy. Why would that person do that? And you hear that person's side of the story, you're like, oh, well, yeah, that first person was lying. But there are seeds that are planted in your head, true or false. And that's what creates who you are. So we need to be in an environment of people who are planting seeds in your head of who you are going to become. We are planting seeds today. You need some conditioning. And if you are gonna run track, I know track runners understand conditioning. You gotta keep running so you can keep running. You gotta keep running so you can run faster. There's training. I don't care how fast you are, you gotta keep conditioning because you will lose it. How positive you think you are. If you don't keep that mind fresh in the writing, you will lose it. You need conditioning. So I don't know what areas you need to get strong in this year, but we need to figure that out. Do me a favor, throw it in the chat real quick. What area do you need to get stronger in? Is it the speed? Is it the agility? Is it your emotional control? Is it your ability to sit in front of a project, not be able to figure it out, but not quit? That is a skill set that I've acquired. I'm trying to figure this thing out. How am I going to get this thing done? And it got to a point where I say, I'm so frustrated. I got to go pick up Instagram and just stroll, scroll through that and go watch some YouTube. And I'm just not going to think. I have been breaking through this barrier of not being able to figure it out. This is mental conditioning for me. I don't know what areas you need to get strong in, but you know, so we need to focus on that. Okay. So every, you have everything perfect. I just don't think maybe you're conditioning enough or you don't have the right community. Lastly, consistency, consistency. Everybody that you will find on this couch shares the same traits of consistency. Meaning we've been doing the same thing for a long time. These aren't pandemicpreneurs here. The information you're about to get today are from people who understand the, re the reason you can't trust somebody in business that really got rich during the pandemic is because they don't understand what it's like when things aren't good. Like we've, we've been in the game for a while. There's the ups and downs. I was selling t-shirts. I, I, I remember where, where I can, I can sell t-shirts for a certain price, but then the United States goes through some issue with China and the price of cotton goes up. And I think, oh my gosh, my business is over. I'm not gonna be able to afford t-shirts. So I gotta raise the prices. If I raise the prices, nobody's gonna buy at the higher prices. These are the things, I remember the ups and downs, the seasons in the mall. It's really popping November, December, but it gets cold in January in the mall and nobody's buying. And I got to figure out how to keep my mind fresh and how to keep my mind focused to know that in March, late February, March, when them taxes hit, oh, it's up again. I'm excited again. So March, April, we're good. May, June, for some reason, when it gets hot, nobody wants to be in a mall. So it slows down and we see the ups and downs of business. But we're still here. So I need you to be consistent. I just wish you stopped jumping around from thing to thing every single year. Every year you got some idea of rebranding and you're not even rebranding, you're quitting the thing and doing something different. And you're just trying to tell people that you're doing this different thing and you call it rebranding. So it doesn't seem like you quit, you quit. You keep quitting, but we are gonna be consistent. I wanna see some people that have been doing the same thing progressively for the last six years, last five years, last 10 years, nonstop. So we are here, welcome to Free Smoke. We about to give you this free smoke, smoke, man. You ain't got to pay for this, but you could, okay? You could drop a little super chat. Give a couple <laughs> dollars. Y'all did miss my birthday. Y'all can throw some super chat. Somebody got it. We got a super chat, right, Nella? Somebody, somebody dropped a super chat. Super chat. Right? We did get Let's a super chat. That. We got one from the Activity Playhouse. Yeah. Thank you so much. We greatly appreciate That's you, Nayada. Girl. And everything you do. But welcome, welcome, y'all, to Free Smoke. Free Smoke, And since Free David smoke. already brought me in, I might as well give the house here now. We already here. We here. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, y'all, you already know, I got to give you your house rules for the day. 
first, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that like button. Hit that like button, share this live with five friends, and bring them on here because today's conversation is going to be nothing but fire. And then they're going to see the smoke too, right? That's sure. <laughs> <laughs> all. And smoke, of smoke. course, as always, if you're loving this information, go ahead and drop that super chat so that we can go ahead and teach the children, y'all. This, this money ain't going to us in our pockets. It's not going to Dave's pockets. It's going so that Dave and his friends can go around to the inner city of Atlanta, to the schools, and teach the children how they can be entrepreneurs and how they can build businesses, okay? But let's go ahead, get to this free smoke. I know y'all ready. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of which... January 8th, January 8th, I need y'all to put it in your calendars, okay? We're going to Martin Luther King <laughs> High School, and uh, we about to show them something that they've never seen before. There is a fight every day in Martin Luther King High School. Every day. And I, when I'm talking to the administrator, I said, like, every day or it just happens often? They said, we can expect it every single day. So we've got to go show them something different because their environment says this is what we do. So uh, we're going to bring some successful friends uh, to the school. We're going to talk to them. Uh, the school said, man, we ain't got no money. I said, I, don't, I didn't ask you. We don't need money, okay? The payment is our ability to go teach the people that's going to influence my children. We want them to be better. So um, hopefully you all can make it. So let's jump into this thing, man. We just going to have a very casual conversation around entrepreneurship. I started this live show because I be having the dopest conversation with my friends when there's no cameras on. Oh, my gosh. And I'm like, yo, let's, we need to just have conversations, not an interview, but just a conversation around entrepreneurship. And uh, you will be able to call in. So uh, I'm going to have my friends introduce themselves. Uh, ladies first. Welcome to the show. What's up, world? What's up, Dave? What up? My name is Jasmine Womack. I'm known as the Jasmine Womack across all social media platforms. I'm a leadership consultant, and I help leaders, experts, to maximize their message by writing a best-selling book and monetizing it through high-ticket consulting. Love it. Love it. Push Man Mitch. That sounded so dope. How can I follow everybody? Shout out to Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> nah, um, I'm Pushman Mitch. I go by Mitch, but I have the number one rental car business in Atlanta. We got cars in Miami, Orlando, LA, Houston, soon to be Vegas. And I have the number one coaching program for a rental car business coach. Just Google it. I'll come up number one. But if anybody need help with that, y'all know where to hit me. There it is. There it is. <laughs> All right. So how was y'all week, man? What's going on in the world? Stress-free. Uh, it's the holiday. so Stress-free? You know, Stress free from no me. stress, bro. I told you if I complain, it would be very, very rude. It's some for some reason I'm favored enough and blessed enough to be doing better every year than I was last year. Yeah. And I think it's because I go a little bit harder though. You go harder. I go harder every, every year. year. I go against my last year self. I used to work at uh, Urban Outfitters, and we, they used to do like the year to like last year's numbers for the day. Mm. That's what I do now. Same with my business, my own. So I see how much I made last year the same day, and I try to beat that day every single day. Gotcha. So I go harder. Every day. Love it, love it. How was your week, Jess? Oh, it was chill. You know, the kids are out of school for uh, winter break and all the things. So mm -hmm. just rest and relaxing before we go kill 2024. Is that your plan? <laughs> Is that your plan for 2024? Oh, it's already in motion. Yeah. It's already, it's been in motion. I love it. 2024 love it. started in October. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I love that. So let, let's, let's talk about our 2023, man. Like, what's... What was going on in the year, uh, either in personal or just in your industry? What's, what's, what's happening? Okay. Go for it, it is guys. what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, <laughs> I know at least for me, business-wise, we did well. Uh, we, you know, met our <laughs> income, our revenue goals and whatnot. Um, and I think more, even more important for me is that we had a lot of our clients that reached major milestones, mm -hmm. which is how I... I gauge my success, you know, like how successful can I help my clients to be, you know, how successful can I help when people come to my live events? What are they walking away with? You know, um, how is my family impacted? So for me, this was, I would like to say, like one of my friends said a year of surrender because I changed everything to really create a business that honors my family and the life that I wanted to live. Mm -hmm. So I changed hours, you know, I changed structures, I changed programs. I did a lot of different things in that change. There was a lot of learning lessons. There were some downs and some ebbs and flows, but then there were some ups and high points too. 
So, you know, just making it through those challenging moments so that when you see the outcome, it's like everything that I did was absolutely worth it. Mm. Yeah. You know, give me the Kay. worst down. I was about to say, I'm going to go on to something totally different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, so <laughs> the worst down, last spring I was sunsetting one of my programs and we were trying mm -hmm. something else out. I mean, we were trying it at a lower price point than what I normally charge. And it was the probably one of the most awful mistakes I ever made. I said, never again. Really? <laughs> I said, never again. Um you know, we sell high ticket consulting because we work with consultants who want to sell high ticket or whatnot. And so we help them to write books, get corporate contracts, create curriculum based programs and all the things. Right. But in the spring, I decided, hey, let's sell this ninety seven dollar pro this one ninety seven. Oh, gosh, it was awful. <laughs> like I've never had I don't have chargebacks or anything yeah. like that. But literally within two weeks of selling that, we had the most amount of chargebacks sure. that we had ever experienced. Here I am. I'm thinking I'm helping folks. You know, like, let me sell some. Oh, my God. Nah. It was awful. <laughs> it was awful. And these were people that had went through everything. They were coming on the calls and stuff. And then mm -hmm. they were just, you know, oh, this is a fraudulent charge. And me, I take that person. You tell us, you saying I'm still sold from you. I did not. <laughs> you know, nah, I answered your questions struggle. and all the things. Yeah. And so. What I learned through that process, though, because we learned we we won 100 percent of the chargebacks. Oh, and so what a lot of business owners don't do is that they don't document well. Yeah. And so because we document extremely well on the back end, we were able to win all of those chargebacks and keep our accounts in good standing. Good, good, so good. what so what documentation well means that you have your systems in order that you're able to actually pull the documentation of when someone accessed the program, mm -hmm. when they joined, when they accessed, when was the last time they logged in. We could um, pull when they commented on stuff in Facebook groups, when they came on a call. We were pulling all of this data. When they commented, screenshot, 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 uploaded at the strike, boom, I'm good. Mm. You know, but a lot of people don't. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I be, yeah, I be losing I, <laughs> uh, emails too email doc, e e emails as well so we you know communicate through email so that we can have a a track record you you have to have a paper trail mm. and so when people like to say certain things or they make certain accusations let let, let us go pull your paper trail through yeah. communication through the facebook groups through the zoom coaching calls through the actual coaching platform to see when you logged in, what you accessed, how much of it you accessed, when we responded to you, all of the things have timestamps. And so we were able to um, win 100% of those chargebacks because of the documentation and the organization right. that we were able to keep on the but back But you're end. not going low ticket anymore? Not that low ticket, no. My, my lowest ticket is my books. And then it jumps to what? Um, ten, ten, ten thousand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta make a decision. <laughs> no, well, it's ten. My my programs are ten and twenty five. Actually, we increased the rate, so twelve, mm. twelve thousand and twenty five thousand. However, gotcha. I was actually just having a conversation with a colleague today, early this morning, after you and I briefly chatted, and I was talking about creating a lower ticket to offer, but between three and five K. So that right. that's as low as I go in, in terms of coaching consulting. Other than that is the digital product store and my books, anything that gotcha. is self-study, gotcha. but to get access to me or to any type of consulting. No, it's going to be an investment for that. You I don't that. have time to waste. <laughs> you think that you took an L this year? <sighs> Oh, one L. I'm, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I wanted to make sure we was having real conversations. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's a safe uh, space. I, I, had, I took 100 L's, I felt like, this year. I had a big loss in an uh, investing situation, so over 200 grand. Lost that. Mm. Um, and I don't see no sign of getting it back. <laughs> so I, just, <laughs> I just put that there. Then you got, um, I had investments that I made the prior year that, you know, it came to fruition this year that 
I wasn't going to get that money back. <laughs> and then in my industry, a lot of stuff changed. So as far as insurance is concerned, so we in the private rental sector, mm -hmm. we don't really use Toro unless, you know, some of our beginner students do that. So me in particular, I still got a, a, a large fleet and we have them privately covered through like Lula Insurance and GMI Insurance. Mm -hmm. They went from doing primary coverage to secondary. So that's a big change for us. So we had to figure out creatively how to get our cars covered still mm -hmm. in the case of somebody getting an accident. So that's a huge change. That's a, yeah. it's a big thing. And uh, so that means that curriculum has to change, too, inside of the, the courses yeah. and stuff. So uh, it, it was a lot of different things. Oh, wow, because you created the courses when it was a certain way. And yeah, you and now it people are update. doing it that way, and that's no longer the correct way. I mean, you still can get them covered, but it just yeah. won't be primary. Yeah. And people don't read the fine print even when they ride Uber. You yeah. know, Uber changed their term and conditions every month, every couple of days for real. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, just see that you updated. They send you that email. We don't look at it. Yeah. But now you can't do certain things in Uber. You can't, the, the time stamps, like how long they wait for you, whatever. You might can't be on, eating in the car and it's a violation. They can kick you off the platform. You won't never mm. look at that. You just be like, all right, bet. I'm just getting an Uber. Right. But for Lula, when I, when that's my job to do as like, you know, I'm a coach. So I make sure I, outside of just my own fleet, I got other people that look up to me that's doing the same thing. And I'm like, okay, cool. They just, they just did an update. They just did an update just now, and I'm like, all right, you're going to do an update and go from primary to secondary, and everybody got hundreds of cars getting covered from this insurance, thinking that they can get a claim covered, but it's no longer available. You got to read the fine print. Mm. They say the only way you can get primary coverage is if it's an employee of the business going to do business activities. That's the only way they'll cover it primary, other than that, it's secondary. So you can go yeah. in Toro, hire a car, and you can be covered primarily if they don't cover the whole thing, they'll cover the rest. Gotcha. Makes sense? So, yeah. yeah. Some of y'all would never know that. We, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. But in That's reality, a monkey wrench in the business, you, for sure. You know what I mean? But it's in every business. I mean, everything changes. They, everything changes with the time. But that was a big wrench for us because now we had to figure out how do we still get covered? So now we got other things like we used to use Alliance. Alliance is uh, umbrella coverage outside of whatever coverage the insurance company provides. You can go get your own policy. They no longer do it for small um, rental car companies. So it got to be Hertz Enterprise or one of the other bigger brands. They won't take a, a, a smaller brand. So Dang. that's gone. You get what I'm saying? So if you're talking about taking L's, we were taking a lot of blows the whole year. But like, like you was talking about before, um, that's just part of the game. I mean, wh whatever happens, we still going to keep going. We're just going to adjust to what happens. I had a student and you talked about like uh, how coaching is necessary and people will think for a long time about how to do one thing. Mm -hmm. That would take you a second to say, Dave, how you do that? For sure. I got a student here in New York. He literally was like, man, I'm trying to get this done for like the last five, six months, man. But they saying uh, you got to get this uh, certain license in New York to have your cars for Uber. I was like, just get the license. <laughs> just get the license. Like you're going to do everything but just go and get the license. Like, yeah. oh, it costs three hundred dollars. Like you're going to let three hundred dollars stop you from getting the back. Yeah. And, and then a, the a same mm -hmm. thing happened this week. Somebody said, man, I paid ninety seven dollars for this course and as soon as I find out they said the equipment cost three thousand dollars I'm over it it's like what are we talking about right now you're gonna let three thousand dollars stop you from your bag right and that's right. that's kind of how you got to view it but I'm not gonna let no insurance stop me from my bag I'm gonna go ahead and adjust and pivot I'm gonna make sure I'm still doing the same thing but you just got to do it to where I'm covered yeah it's simple but sure. talking about L's that's that's gonna be every single year I plan to take L's every year yeah. but a L is a lesson if you just keep going for it's sure. a loss if you stop that's a fact. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I, I think people fail to realize that losing is a prerequisite to winning. Oh, yeah. There's no there's no way around it. So, like, people are afraid of failure, right? They have that, that fear of failure. But the failure is how you win. So, you've got, like, you should be afraid of not winning. You shouldn't be afraid of the first step. Like, the first step is failure. You have to go through it. People look at it as a bad thing, but how do we learn how do we how do we really understand how this things work this thing works if everything is perfect? No, I, I literally broke that down in the live the other day. I was like, I just think about all the L's that I took and why I'm so good at what I do. Mm -hmm. Because I was like thinking when I first started in the rental car business and I, I had did a, a exchange on Toro, mm -hmm. and I, I handed the keys to the per I did a uh, not I didn't hand the keys to him. He did a, a the autonomous version, like where you don't go meet them and they do yeah. it by themselves. My car got stolen. Right. So without that, I would have never did a police report with the car not being in my name because it was under my business. And then I found out that since it was under my name, I mean, it wasn't under my name. I couldn't do a police report. Mm. They said, oh, the person whose name is there. I was like, well, it's under my business. Now, when it's under my business, I had a partner and his name on the, the way we filed the articles of organization is the only name that shows on there. Mm. So because my name wasn't on there, I wouldn't have found out 
that when I'm doing a police report, it's a couple things that I found out that I need to say, but I can get it done regardless if my name is on it or not. But without that L, I wouldn't have learned about trackers because when the car got stolen, I didn't have no trackers in it. So I couldn't Ooh. find out where it was. That's one lesson. Now I know to have two or three trackers in there. And I know about kill switches to be able to cut the car off and disable the engine. Yep. Just imagine if I never took that L. I was just going willy nilly and I get up to a thousand cars and all of them get stolen around the same time. <laughs> <laughs> all of them going, your whole business over. But now because I went through that L, I'm prepared now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Same thing go for actually doing an insurance claim. I don't, I, let's imagine I'm going to a Rolls Royce. Now I'm driving a half a million dollar car. That car gets stolen. Or something like that. Now I got to do an insurance claim. I say the wrong thing. Now I'm responsible for the entirety of that car loan because yeah. I said the wrong thing. And I, I did the claim the incorrect way. You know what I'm saying? So those L's are lessons and they literally help you get better. Now I'm an expert. I feel like a person can't call themselves an expert if they haven't went through, have experienced with worst case scenario in their business. Oh, for You're sure. You're an expert, but if everything go wrong, what do we do? I don't know. That's what you're going to be saying. <laughs> but if everything go wrong, I know exactly what to do. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? And and not only how to do it, but bounce back and then make more money. A hundred percent. Never trust a coach that never took a loss or try to try right. to, try to act like they got everything figured out. Lord. Yeah, right. I took a major loss at the end of last year mm. that set me up for this year. Talk to me. And so it was with my event. So I host an event every year called Published and Paid Live. Back then it was called Six Figure Storyteller Live. Mm. And I underpriced the tickets. And so I underpriced the tickets. We made about $55,000 on ticket revenue, but it cost me close to $120,000 to execute the event. So I had to come out mm. of my operating budget to cover the cost of the event. <laughs> Yo, bro, I, I've been here. <laughs> I've been here. I, Yo. And so then at the, I mean, the event was executed immaculately. Mm. Right. And we still came out on a profit on the back end because we converted and we converted well, but we didn't convert to the level that I had planned for. And so I said, you know what? I am never going in the hole or what I perceive to be in the hole for an event like ever again. Yeah. And so what I did was at the end of last year, in order to not allow that to happen anymore, I put together a plan to where this year I said, okay, I had this experience in 2022. In 2023, I'm going to master live events. I'm going to attend at least one live event every quarter, and it was going to have to be at a certain price point, right? And so Hold that on, meant so that you were saying you have to pay somebody for the thing that you're charging other people for. Oh, absolutely. Don't miss it. So I, and I didn't just buy general admission. I, I bought the highest ticket level for every event, right. That I, that I went to. Right. And so I was investing. I went to uh, live event trainings in, in terms of like a two day intensive. And then I went to different live events at least once or twice per quarter. Right. Um, and I learned things I liked, things I didn't like. Right. I learned what I did wrong, what I should have and, and things that I did well that I should have continued. Right. And no, so a lot of people um, the, to your point, a lot of people don't understand that. How do you ever learn how to do anything? Like, how do we ever learn how to make our first dollar? It's from somebody else. Now, if you want to get great at something, we, we, we throw in events. And if we don't never get training, let's just say how these people think how the course game and the education game goes. You could just start a course and become a millionaire. If that's the case, everybody who's watching this live, <laughs> everybody watching this show, go and start their course right now. Go and start their online coaching program. You should become a millionaire in a couple of weeks, I guess, right? But it's not true. You got to actually get good at it. You got to learn about funnels. You got to learn about lead generation. You got to learn about marketing. You got to learn about the classes. Like you just said, you did a VIP experience. How do you know what to do for a VIP experience if you've never been to one? I think that, pe you know I mean? I think that people, uh, they don't take into consideration how important the learning process is. Yeah. And so for some reason, there's some assumption that because you have a business, you want to start a business, you're just supposed to go into it and automatically know everything there is to know about the topic. Right. And you're just supposed to wake up and, and, and be an expert at it. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people 
don't consider the fact, no, I need to learn this. And in some instances, I have to learn how to learn. That's that's a good one. So how do you learn? What's the best? Uh, like when I went to grade school, I, I found out that I don't learn the same way as everybody else, right? And you remember the short bus and the slower classes, right? I never was in those. But when you get older, you get to see why people would be in there and why that would be beneficial to even somebody like myself. Because I don't learn just listening to the teacher. My attention span might be shorter. I might be more visual. I might be a person who needs somebody to go over it a couple times with me before I can actually retain it. Because we all don't, we're not all at the same. Just think about when you in school, you got the gothic kids. You got the jocks. You got all of these different people, the athletes, whatever. So you got these different cliques in the school, and they all act different, talk different, walk different. So we all learn exactly the same. But they, they teaching us in school that it's only one way to get a right answer. So by default, we sitting there, when we get out of school and we go out into the workplace, we doing it the same way. Like, oh, it, it has to be the way that the government said or the college says. I don't know so about we, that because I'm a former teacher. I was a teacher for 12 years before I became – you know, before I transitioned into entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And so one of the cornerstones of teaching is actually understanding the different type of learning styles mm -hmm. and understanding how the children in your class learn and cave and, and tailoring your um, instruction to that. And so back to, you know, the back to my point is that when it comes to entrepreneurship and business ownership, there's an assumption that Oh, I'm just supposed to already know this without con taking into consideration. Know that there's a learning co process. Mm -hmm. There's a learning curve, and you gotta you gotta take the opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm. And to your point, understanding how do you learn? Right. And 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 that's a great point. And so, how do you learn? First, like you said, you have to determine what and what's the way that you learn best. Like I know that I can learn through reading and through lecturing. So I'm auditory. Mm -hmm. Some people are visual. They absolutely need graphs and all the things. But it's not just with the methods that you learn, but it's actually with taking the time to actually sit down and study. Mm. Whether you're listening, whether you're reading, you have to set aside the time to focus in on something, learn that content, and then actually go and implement it. Mm. And, back, and, and to David's point, having mentorship or having coaching or, or guidance, you can be doing things, but you can be doing the wrong thing all the time. You mm -hmm. can be doing it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So having that guidance helps you to course correct and get back on track so that you can attain the, the goal that you desire. What, um, I learned, what I learned though is, is I don't really learn the same way that anybody that I've seen learns. I only catch things. So it's like when they say it's not taught, it's caught. Yeah. That's how I am. I, I don't I don't like to sit in a class. Yeah. I don't like to sit in the training. I don't like to hear a lecture. I don't like to look at PowerPoints. I'm the opposite. Matter of fact, it literally I'm if I really don't want to know something, I'll sit in a lecture. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's that's how I am. And it's, and I understand that yeah, that's sure. how I am. But what I can do is <coughs> find somebody that I'm interested in and I can just mimic what they do. Mm -hmm. They call it the lie still cheat method, right? Lie to yourself to believe in yourself bigger than what you've ever been. And then you steal from people who are coming back from where you're trying to go. And you cheat off their test by going to their events, seeing their consistency, things of that nature. So me and my, if I want to be like Dave Shans and I want to have a podcast like him, I literally can just mimic everything he's doing. Mm -hmm. I, I can start there. Before I even got the money to pay for a, a well-deserved fee that he gets to teach me how to do what he's doing, I'll sit there and go, okay, he posts every single day. He posts on YouTube every day. He does a short. He actually re records this amount of content. He, he actually promotes his content where he teaches what he does yeah. and says, yo, I, I record on Wednesdays. I record on this day. I drop twice a week. I'll just do exactly that, mm -hmm. literally. And I'll, I won't only just do what he's saying verbally, like learning from it. I'll just watch him. I see that he posts today at 12 o'clock. I'm going to post at 12 o'clock every day. <laughs> and, then, and, then you, and then all of a sudden you start seeing results and you're like, oh, damn. Well, there it go. His website. Look, I'm going to have my website look like just like that. He got automation on his DMs. I'm going to do the automation on my DMs. You can just start right there. And then you talk about, okay, I'll pay for mentorship. I, the stuff I learned from for free, it worked. If I pay him, what the hell? I might get right next to him and then have the relationships. So that's kind of how I figured, like, how I learned. I was like, yeah, these lectures going to kill me, but I can just shadow this person. And, and I found that worked best for me. Yeah. So that's why I asked why you, how you learned, because some people actually, they don't really know that the best way they learn. I also know the best way that I, I make money because I have to feel like, like my, my back is against the wall. When you got millions of dollars in your account, it's hard to do that. So I make a big purchase. So people be like, yo, like he talked about my watch. I was like, Psh. 
I'm feeling a little comfortable. <laughs> Drop 20 on a watch. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it, for me, it might be a Rolls Royce. But when you feel uncomfortable, and, and I got that from somebody else who I, I shadow. And he's like, yeah, he said, whenever I'm feeling comfortable, we got to be com comfortable being uncomfortable. So yeah. if you comfortably making a lot of money, got a lot of assets, and you don't really want for anything, like I don't know the last time I look at a damn gas pump, how much it costs, and I don't know what none of this costs. But when I spend too, a lot of money, I'd be like, that was... That was reckless. Yo, I and was, then I go hard. I was in a mastermind with Grant Cardone one time, and he gave, he gave this fly. He's a billionaire, and he said what he does is so he does do coaching and teaching and course and all that kind of stuff. But he said when the account gets too high, he said I take the money and I buy real estate. I put it into an asset that I can't get a hold of. And he says, Yo, I see my account now. And I'm like, Oh, this is this I it's too low. And he gets nervous. He said, yo, it, that's the thing that drives him to keep going out there and hitting it every single day because mm. he has to take his money and put it in something that he can't have access to. Mm. And I think it's important. This kind of leads into the first conversation that we we're talking about, which is clarity. And that's clarity of yourself. Understanding how you learn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you all have had students where you – Someone told them to do something a certain way, and then you tell them to do something a certain way. They're like, oh, because somebody mm -hmm. else told me this, right? And then you tell them. But the next person they ask the same question to, they give a different answer. Right. And now they're super confused because all these three right answers got me stuck. Because I don't know how to think for myself. I don't know how to get clarity on how I execute. The way I execute is I have to ask one person this question, I'm gonna follow that path, and when it doesn't work, because we think, as soon as Jasmine told me something, oh, it should work, right. no. Jasmine's telling you the foundational principle behind, let's say, how to be an author. Well, you're gonna do exactly what she said do, but you're like, well, it didn't work for me. Well, it's something inside of you Maybe it's maybe she didn't tell you exactly what words to use or maybe she didn't tell you how to pick your particular niche or maybe you're following the directions, but you're not Jasmine. Right. So you got to like do it, then fail and come back to the same person and say, oh, well, it didn't work for you because you missed an element. Right. You got to do this part. OK, now you're ready for another stage. Let's do this part. And I had to understand that I can't just disregard the coach that I'm talking to just because I went out and tried it and I didn't get the result that I thought I was supposed to get. Right. That's how I learn. So I'm learning myself. Mm -hmm. I know I don't listen all the way and my <laughs> wife will tell you, what's so funny? <laughs> <laughs> She'll say something and I'm like, oh, got it. And then I'll do it. And she's like, what are you doing? What you told me to. But there's always like something that I'm going to miss in there. Right. Right. So she was like, yo, go get that, uh, go get my wallet out of my purse. Guess what I do? I bring the whole purse. Right. And she's like, why you do that? I'm saying, because in my head I heard, go get the purse. Right. right? So you have to learn who you are. And I want to know from you all what you've learned about yourself in the way that you personally operate. I am a C on the disc assessment. I, I'm very detail oriented. Mm -hmm. So like I need the details. That's how I learn. That's how I yep. learn best. You know, I'm, I, I can, I can go in and observe and pull things. But my thing is, even if I observe what's on the surface, I know that there are things behind the scenes going on that I don't see that's yeah. making things to run. 100%. And I like to have an entire and, and, and it's weird with, with entrepreneurship because with entrepreneurship, you're never going to have the whole picture before you execute. You have to execute and figure <laughs> things out step by step, right? Mm -hmm. You know, but in that, understanding the details as you're going through it, yeah. you know, identifying those details. And a lot of people don't teach like that, so I, I do that for myself, yeah. you know, to, to make it make sense for me. For sure, for sure. What do you know about you? What do you know about <laughs> Pushman Mitch? I just know that... Um, I'm an alien. That's what I'll say. So <laughs> what I mean by alien is this. I have, I don't have the luxury that other people have to give up. I don't have the luxury that other people have to chill, to relax. Mm. So my friends got to call me and be like, yo, you really need to just chill. And I'll be like, that's insane. <laughs> that's insane. But um, I know that I'm an alien in that regard. So I'm going to make things work that most people might not make work. 
even when like so when it comes to like the numbers don't make sense like if i make a like a business deal i go with my gut i don't go off the numbers i don't like that's why i'm like kind of probably the opposite of you like you real probably analytical and you probably see everything me i don't even got to see anything i just got to see that i could potentially make it work and then i say all right bet i'm taking i'm gonna go because i know that i'm gonna work harder than anybody else that will even get it mm -hmm. so i don't necessarily need to see all the ins and outs of it but if i know that i can do it that's all I need to know. So I know I learned that about myself. And what I had to learn also was that when I'm as a coach, and this is why I, th I feel like I got so good, is that I realized that everybody's not me. They can't do it the way that I do it, even though they want to. They might say, yo, I want to be just like you, Mitch. I'd be like, that's weird to say. You, yeah. It's like, how many offers did you make on your product today? It's like <laughs> zero. You can't want to be like me. So basically what I had to realize is that you know, based off of what they already do, how can I make that person excel from what they already do? Mm. Because a lot of people don't even know how to like take a course or read a book the right way. Yeah. I had to learn how to read a book or like literally like when it's called like when it's like actionable steps books mm -hmm. or training manuals, things like that. I used to read a whole book and then try to go back and execute on it. I used to go yeah. through a whole course. Literally, oh, this is fire. Go to court chapter two. Oh my God, chapter three. And then I, what I realized is that I was doing it wrong. I had to read chapter one, execute mm -hmm. chapter one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> read chapter two, execute chapter two. So I was like doing it wrong. So me even figuring out all the ways that people could potentially learn, that way when I talk to you one-on-one -on -one and I hear what your problems is, I'll be like, I know exactly what to do for you. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, you do it like this. And then they'd be mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, you, you made a million dollars in 10 months? I like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But there's going to be some people that no matter what I do, they ain't going to make a million dollars in 10 months. It's going to take them three years. They literally, that's their journey. They got yeah. to because they got to build momentum at a low scale. They got to before they can go to the next. Yeah. And that's just learning different characters. But yeah, that's, that's what I learned about myself. How, how do you know, how do you know who you are in terms of where I'm going and what I'm going to be doing? So I'll give an example for the podcast space. I'm not good at sales. I should be telling y'all to get some super chats right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just not good at the hard sell, right? Even though I know if you put a seed in the ground, it's going to grow, right? And I'm just asking you to support with the youth or whatever. But I should be making better sales pitches. Mm. But then I found this podcasting space where I can build an audience of people and corporations will give me money to get in front of the audience via ads. I said, right. oh, this is perfect. Because I don't got to sell to nobody. Right. All I have to do is give amazing information to my community and I'll be able to make money from the audience and there will be people that come to me to pay me. I said, got it. Perfect though. Got it. This is me. This is me. So this is how I really got into the space of content creation. How did you all find out that this is the perfect thing for me? Start with you, Jess. <laughs> well, I remember when I was teaching, I, I was a seventh grade teacher. I was in the hallway one day and I said, you know what? I'm going to write books. I'm going to travel the world speaking and I am going to train corporations. I'm going to develop curriculums mm -hmm. for corporations. I saw it. I was in the hallway and I saw it and I said it to myself and I was already working towards it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, that was the day that I saw what I wanted to do, right? And I just work at it toward, I just work at it every day. Like I built something from the ground up. I had no sales background, no marketing background, no nothing. I was a teacher, language arts, right? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and so, I, you know, I was writing, coaching, all that. So writing books and everything just came naturally because I was always a strong writer. But the conviction came when I actually started doing the work mm. and I was getting results and I was getting results for myself and other people asked me to start helping them. And I was like, no, I'm yeah. not helping you. Right. I, I didn't feel confident enough until my husband found out he was like, all these people are coming to you. Why aren't you helping them? I was sending them to my friend. She was like, all these people are coming to you. Why aren't you helping them? Wow. Like here it is right in front of your face. And the moment that I accepted that that's what I was going to do, I, 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 I just accepted it. I told myself, okay, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. I trusted myself. I didn't trust myself previously. I trusted myself to do good for me, but not to provide results for others. Mm -hmm. But once I trusted what I knew, the sky was the limit, yeah. you know? I mean, that, that's, that's what it was. And so 
for me, knowing who I am comes with embracing who I am and trusting that. And not trying to be like other people. Like, I will never be him. I don't want to be him. I'm mm. me. I'm I'm kind of quirky. I'm a nerd. I'm married. Been married almost nine years in February. I I have kids. Thank you, kids. You know, bonus kids. Blended family. Mm. That's who I am. Mm-hmm. You know? That's who I am. Yeah, Mitch want to be outside of this. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I'm in a relationship. You know? Are you? Yes. Congratulations, Eight, Mitch. Yes. Eight you months. Know? Congratulations. Eight months. <laughs> Thank you. Good, man. <laughs> just saying. And so, you know, like, I just, I'm good with that. Mm-hmm. You know, I was out, um, cause I think you hit me this morning and I was out walking this morning talking to my husband. Wow. I'm like, I got the kids. So we had this whole run. He was like, well, you just got to figure out wh- how you're going to do this. Yeah. So I had to drive all the way across town, drop my kids off at my aunts, come all the way. You know, it is what it is. Hey, we about to make it happen, yeah. you know, but that's me. And I'm good with that. Good. And so I think that that conviction is just a part of being good with who you are. And a lot of people don't really like themselves. And a lot of people are not good with themselves. Like they're always looking at the next person and trying to thinking that in order to be accepted, they have to be like somebody else instead of just being who they are and, and, and owning that and the people who rock, rock with you and align with you, then they're going to come and connect with you. 100%. 100%. Uh, shouts out to Braves by Joya Bean for the forty nine ninety nine Super Chat. We appreciate uh-huh. that. It's okay, David. We know the house rules. We appreciate the love. <laughs> Y'all are all right with me, man. <laughs> that seed that you planted in this show and this information it is going to grow, and I'm telling you, because you did that, you are going to get some very, very valuable information. You're going to unlock what you needed today. I'm speaking that in your life, my brother. It's happening. Bushman Mitch, yes. talk to me, man. How did you, how did you know you was who you are? You know, I, it's, it sounds like a crazy question, but I think in the day we're in now, it's increasingly difficult to be who you are because we get to see everybody else Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really tough today man so how do i know who i am that's interesting i don't know that's the real answer i don't know how i know who i am i just uh i literally i'm a person who just believes in my own culture I think I watched one of your videos where you was talking about um, you went you went into a certain space and you was the only one with a chain on. Mm-hmm. I think that right there makes me feel dope. Like that's our culture. We rock change. Yeah. They don't. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but I, that's that's my vibe. But I just like I think it's just a, a collaboration of everything that I've been through. Like every city. Like I, I'm, I'm from Philly, but like I told her earlier, I was like I'm from Atlanta too because yeah. I've been here since 2010. From Savannah, from Hinesville, Georgia. All of them places made me who I am. It's a bunch of different characters. And I had a bunch of dope influences in my life. And I know that's why I am who I am. Yeah. Because of the people that I met. I don't think it's really because I naturally would have been this. I think if I just stayed in Philly, I would. you would never see me here. I'm yeah. talking about the people who I was looking up to in Philly. Right now, they're not doing that well. You know what I mean? And they was like my idols. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And if I, if, if I wasn't lucky enough to be, you know, my mom married my stepdad. And he was in a military family. We moved around. I promise you, I don't think I would be here. And, like, you know, some people are like, yo, I know I would get here regardless. You know, LeBron said this. Yeah. He's insane. LeBron said <laughs> if, he did, if he didn't go to Miami, his career would have been the same. Like, bro. But I, I think that, you know, it's like the butterfly effect. Mm-hmm. Like, every decision that you make has, you know, reactions mm-hmm. to it. So I think, you know, like, like you said, coming to Atlanta, best thing that could have ever happened to yeah. me. Best thing. I never seen nobody that looked like me. Rolls Royce's land. I used to drop Uber, y'all. I'm driving Uber, dropping people off to mansions that's younger than me. I looked at this man get out. I said, "This your crib." Up, I had to pull back up on him. This your crib. <laughs> he said, "Yeah, this my, you know, this my, this my summer house." <laughs> I said, "Yo, <laughs> hey." And then you know that got me curious. Yeah. And since that was like, "Yo, you look like me. You younger than me, but you get into it." And I'm driving Uber, and I was doing good. Drive Uber. I'm just saying, when I drove Uber, I made more money than I made in any job I ever had. Mm-hmm. I'm just put that out there. So and for clarity, Uber, for context, what year was this? This was like 2014. Early, yeah, 2014. Early. 2015. <laughs> so I was I was going hammer like, and then I had one car on Toro, hammer 15, 20k <laughs> a month, busting them. Mm-hmm. But I was driving nonstop though. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So long story short, I think 
it's, it's a catalyst to, you know, ATL and then me being in the right places. And then that helped me become this who I, because I could, you can easily be influenced at any time. Like yeah. you said, when you grew up, it was, it was drugs or, or rapping. So, you know, it's me, it's drugs, rapping, hooping. That's yeah, it. If you're going to hoop, we make it to the league, we could be a millionaire. Otherwise, there's no other way. Oh, How right. could you become a millionaire? Mm-hmm. I know I ain't never, ever, like you said, ever talked to my homies about becoming a millionaire outside of hooping or rapping. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, yeah, you could be, you, you go to the NBA. My dad's seven foot. So that was my plan. I was playing A, yeah. B, C, and D. <laughs> so since that didn't work out, I went straight to working. Yeah. So, you know, I, like I said, I think it's just, it's a, that's the only reason I know. I don't think it's like, I don't think myself is defined. Yeah. I think I'm ever changing and I think I'll continue to. For sure. So in this moment right now, I'm I'm this version of me. I'm in a suit. If you if you check out episode three years ago, it was four years three years yeah, ago, three four years three ago, years bro. ago. I'm I'm in the uh, hoodie and the uh, in the shorts. Yes, sir. You know, next time you see me, we don't know. I might have on a rocket suit. <laughs> <laughs> so I yeah, don't know. I want to send a shout out, man. Uh, I missed a couple of super chats. Jake Smooth Lifestyle, appreciate that ninety nine cents. Family Laurel Blizzard ninety nine cent. We appreciate that. Preston Lathan, really really thank you. I I can't say uh. My brother or my sister, because you know people, they'll be identifying. They don't, you know what I mean? People, no, they don't identify. I don't. I would say, I would say bro. You're like, I'm not a bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> Who, <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? But shouts out to y'all. Yes, absolutely. Um, all right. So clarity, very, very important. Um, deciding on where you're going, right? Any tips on? Just getting clear on where you're going in direction. You want to go take that one first? I could. <laughs> um, I, I, my, you know, my thing is the winner's diet. That's that's my same thing I've been doing for the last eight years. Mm-hmm. Just literally engulfing myself in whatever it is that I want to do. So if it's real estate, if it's rental cars, if it's Airbnb, I'm I'm following Airbnb podcasts. I'm I'm going to all of the seminars. I'm going to the networking events. I'm in, I'm listening to the podcast. I'm reading the books. I'm my whole diet because it's not just what you eat; it's everything you ingest. So I would say that's how you get the direction. You pick what it is that you you serious about. Be obsessed with it, and then just devise a plan. It's a but, numbers. But game. how do we pick that though? Because that's the challenge. So that's I exposure. think some people will go hard at something. Right. But it's like, what do I do? Like, how do I know how, like, where I'm going to go for the rest of my life? I don't see. Why, why do it got to be the rest of your life, though? I don't know. I'm I don't saying. think it. I that's, how, think, that's how I look at it. When yeah. I commit to something, I'm committed. So the morning, it, it might change later. Right. But the morning meetup, I'm committed to being on a call with hundreds of people every single morning mm. for the rest of my life. Okay. But I'm it didn't committed. start out like that, though. It, it didn't, didn't start out like that. It, it grew. You know, because we started out with the uh, with the midnight calls, the, the 12 a.m. joints, yes. like back in 20, what, 16? For sure. You know? But when I did that, I said, I'm going to do this midnight call every midnight on Monday for the rest of my life. Got you. So oh, you just said based on what you're saying. Only because when, because I found myself jumping around from thing to thing. Right. So now the only way that I'm going to do something is, and this may not happen this way, right? right. But I think this is why... Um, I've been able to accomplish some of the things I've accomplished. Right. Because when I'm jumping in, I'm saying, is this something that I'm going, I can think of in my space right now, I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life. Mm. Or until I sell it. Or I'm until cool it that. evolves. Or until it evolves. But in, for my own focus, I have to say, this is what I'm going to be doing. If not, I'll change it in six months. Mm. Right. So what I hear you saying is that you... Set your fo- you focus in on one thing and go all in 100%. on that thing. Hundred percent. And so, when it comes to people having to make a decision, it's just make a decision. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I think that uh, especially when it comes to entrepreneurship, people tend to be all over the place and they want to choose this, this, and that, and have their hands in a whole bunch of different buckets because they might see that's where you are. That's where you are without considering that that's not where you started. You started off with, you know, like one or two focuses and yeah. went in on that. And so I like to take myself through a process. Number one, which is that what's going to be the easiest for me to do right now? What can I stay committed to? And mm-hmm. what's going to, what has the potential to make me the most money in the quickest yeah. time? Yeah. You know, like if, if, if it's not going to be easy for me to do this thing, 
then I'm wasting my time. I'm going to have to put more effort into learning from scratch. One of the reasons why, you know, um, helping experts create thought leadership through books worked for me was because I leveraged my skill set. Mm -hmm. I was an English teacher. I was a writing coach and I already had a very strong skill of writing. So I did that personally and professionally for 12 years wow. before I started a business off of it. What I see a lot of people doing in entrepreneurship is that they're trying to come into something from the ground zero and build up from that instead of leveraging their natural skills and talents. You have a natural talent for community building and communication. So you leverage that mm -hmm. along with your shirts from the very beginning. For sure. You for know, sure. and that was one of the things that helped you, Boy. you know, grow, Big you know. And so what I find is that people want to often follow a passion or follow a purpose without realizing that your purpose is directly connected to something that you're already doing. Yeah. It's connected to a skill set that you already have. Yeah. You just might be ignoring it because to you, it seems too easy, mm -hmm. but that's your gift. Yeah. So yeah. that that's like, what's that thing that comes extremely easy to you that you're probably already operating in. You're doing something with it already. You might be doing it for free or help or helping people in some capacity, but because it comes so easily and natural to you, you're just overlooking it. No, that's the thing you probably should explore and start with because it comes easy to you and you can do it well. This is good. This is good. This is good. Hey, if you want to call in and ask a question, maybe your question is, I'm going, I'm going through this situation right now. I'm, I'm between a couple uh, ideas. Help me get clear. Send a text message to 404-421-5732. Send a text message if you want to ask a question live, and Nella will call you, okay? Let's do this. Um, next, after clarity, is coaching. That's a missing key, okay? But the coaching... The coaching space is getting an increasingly negative rap. Mm -hmm. No, or is that me? Do y'all experience that? No, for sure. It's in, it's insane. Yeah, they only call coaches scammers. I don't like it. Some are though. Unfortunately. Some are. Some are one hundred percent. Some are unfortunately. I think because every people trusted coaches for a while, and you just jump in to the coaching space and you're saying, oh, well, I did something successfully in 2021, 22, when there was a trillion dollars in the economy. And now I'm going to coach you, but it's not going, you're not going to work because you don't understand what it's like in the ups and downs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some of it falls back on the people too, because 100%. they're not making wise decisions or because they enter into programs and think that because they pay the, 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 then they're going to get the end product because they paid without realizing, no, no, you got to do the work too. Facts. Facts. <laughs> you have to show up. You have to ask questions and not be afraid of, I don't want to look like, I don't, I don't want people to think that I don't know what I'm, well, you don't know what you're talking about. That's why you're here. <laughs> and nobody else does either that everybody's here because they need help. Mm -hmm. But people oftentimes don't want to speak up. They don't want to ask for help when they need it yep. because of, childhood imprints or whatever or because they're concerned about how other people are going to think about them mm -hmm. or just not showing up consistently or life happening and now you're not committed to the thing anymore right. so yeah there's some scammers in the industry but at the same time a lot of people are scamming themselves that's a fact how do we find the right coach i think the coaches is getting scammed I'm going to just put that out there. The coaches are getting scammed. Bro, what? It's not fair. You pay me 10, 20 grand, and then you're able to make 100000 a $1 million. I'm getting scammed. You pay me $1,000 to come to a mentor, like a, a mastermind, hey. or 500 to come to a mastermind, mm -hmm. and then you walk away with my relationships, contacts. I'm like, yeah, they're good. Hey, and, and you know, every time I get a speaker, they're like, yeah, just text me. Tell them you came from Mitch, and they're going to look out for you. Damn, you getting all my resources for that? Yeah. And then you can make me look bad. I didn't give you my actual people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the dude from your class, man, he tore me up, man. What? I'm getting scammed. But in reality, I think it takes courage to be a coach in this space while it's like yeah. this. Because you're going to be attacked. We're under attack at all times. So you got yeah. the people who you're trying to help attacking you. You got, uh, you got the people who are Samuel L. Jackson off Django. 
attacking you. It's just a reality. <laughs> now you, you you got the people you're trying to help. You got other people that look similar to you trying to uh, attack you as well. And then you got the 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 reality of do you want to take that heat while coaching too? Is is the what you want to do? as important as you thought it was. So mm-hmm. that's when a lot of people are leaving the space. And some people think the coaches lead a space because, you know, they wasn't successful or they was a scammer. Well, they just got tired of the negativity around yeah. it. They tried to help their folks. Cause you got to think about it. We are putting ourselves on the limelight. We, I didn't ask to be called the guru. I ain't never say I'm the guru of rental cars. The people told me that they, they mm-hmm. do that for you. But once the people do that to you, the other people outside, they like, man, nah, that's just another or whatever. At the end of the day, what happens if we stop? If we don't talk, if we don't say nothing, y'all going to all go out there and do it wrong, and then something worse going to happen. The people who not really doing it going to be the ones coaching. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. Now y'all really tore up, because the ones who really was looking out for y'all, y'all was attacking them. And we said, you know what? We're just going to keep our bags. And I had a conversation about just like, when we try to do something for the community and we involve the community in like an investment or something like that, that's the worst thing you can do. Because you got novice investors, novice entrepreneurs mm-hmm. coming into something, not understand what an investment is. It's right. a risk. An investment is a risk. Now, if me as a millionaire or whatever, let's say I'm a successful person and I go to my community like, look, I want to give back. And I've been investing in real estate look, this long, man. Look, my property's making this much money. I'm going to let y'all come in at 500 a piece, 1,000 a piece. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put down a dub. I'm going to put down 20,000 on it. Y'all just put down five. I'll give y'all equal shares of this joint. Yep. We say all of that, right? And then now... If the market crashes like it does and somehow we, we upside down on what we're supposed to do, I took a loss, you took a loss. But <laughs> because I'm still going to be living good after the loss and you you're still going to be where you was. You're the scammer. I'm the scammer. <laughs> I would rather just say, you know, that's when somebody would say, look, we're going to be gatekeepers then. It's like, which one do you pick? Mm. So if, if, if it wasn't my hard work, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. I wouldn't even do it. And that's just the reality behind it. That's real. How do we, how do we, how, yes, we got a caller? Okay, cool, cool. Uh, next question is going to be how to find, uh, how to find the right coach. But uh, who we got calling in? Somebody talk to me. All right, LaRon, you are on Free Smoke with David and his amazing friends. What's happening? Yes, what's going on, David? Uh, huge fan. Uh, first of all, I just want to say peace, love, and light to everybody on this uh, podcast right now. Yes, sir. Um, pretty much, uh, just started uh, like a small business, me and my friend. Um, we do like a, a small podcast and everything. But right now, I'm an artist. Um, I make art. And my game plan is to release my art locally. Um, what is your advice to people about starting local with business? Because I think a lot of people, um, they want to start like worldwide or nationwide. Um, so what would your rollout be to somebody? Oh, hold hold, hold on, man. I just, it's, it's uh, I'm cringing right now. <laughs> Because first you came on and you said, yo, I'm, you know, I got this little podcast. And then you started talking about you're a little artist and you're starting local. It's like, I don't think you see the game big enough yet. You know what I mean? Like, you see your own podcast as this little podcast. When I started my t-shirt brand, I printed 72 t-shirts. And you couldn't tell me that I didn't have my own factory and I wasn't pr- doing thousands and thousands of t-shirts when I started. You couldn't tell. I'm coming up telling people this is the greatest thing in the world. You understand? Yeah. My, 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 my thought wasn't, wasn't, yo, let me start local. My goal was let me start building this multi-million dollar empire. I don't care if you live down the street from me or you're in another part of the world. I'm going to get to whoever I can get to right now. And if you are planning on doing anything on social media, it doesn't even really make sense to even put out there that I'm starting local. Because your local are the followers that are following you right now. I don't care if you got 30 followers. Your local is the 30 people that follow you regardless of where they are. Especially when it comes to music. What that tells me is, and I hate to put you on the hot seat right now, what this tells me is you want to do it for your inner circle to look cool in your neighborhood. I want to start local because you want to be cool in your neighborhood. And I'm not, I'm not saying you shouldn't take over the immediate area, area for sure. But your visions of, where do you live? Yes. Uh, so right now I'm currently in North Carolina. North uh, Carolina. Charlotte, Charlotte area. 
Yeah, your vision is to be able to go to L.A. and put on a show and get it rocking. But because you don't have a venue in L.A., you just happen to go to the gym in your high school and go perform during a game or something like that. Just because you can't go perform in Miami right now, you're about to go to this little open mic night in your city. The only reason you're doing that is because you can't get to Miami or you can't get to Houston or you can't get to England right now. That's the only reason you're doing the things that you have to do locally right now. But even if you're doing things locally, I'm just asking you to not see it as no little podcast and not to see your music career as starting local. You need to just start. You happen to be local, of course, but you need to start. But your vision needs to be so much bigger than your backyard. Is it music or is it like art, like paint or like? Yes, yes. And sorry for the confusion. I want to be the I want to be the, the the next Picasso or even bigger. I want to be do artwork. Uh, we do art. Yes, yes. Well, I'm a it's a it's a food brand. I'm a food artist, so I draw. I want to have my food my uh, my art in every place that you eat in the world. There we go. Yeah. There we go. And the way you start getting your art in every you said a restaurant. Yeah. Every restaurant in the world is you just happen to gotta go to the spot down the street from your house. But that doesn't mean you're starting local. It just means you're starting with whatever's close to you. But I don't want you, I'm telling you that, that's, where, what city are you from? So um, I'm originally uh, in Greensboro and, you know, slash Raleigh, so Greensboro. Is it a small town? Yes, sir. Yeah, small Boy town. From there. Yeah, you're suffering from that <laughs> small, you're suffering, it, I'm not, no knock on you, but you're suffering from that small town mentality. Yeah. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? So my first, my first sales were my coworkers. But I never, I didn't look at that as starting local. It doesn't mean I'm about to sell these shirts to whoever's <laughs> close to me. So th that's the first thing. You got to reframe and start putting a plan together for your international takeover. Which yeah. after you build, after you see that vision, your next step is probably going to go to that, that little restaurant down the street and put some art down there. Definitely. That's a, that's a funnel, man. Sir, hey, look, I'm, I'm grateful for this. This is, you know, this is uh, that's that's mentorship. This is what this podcast is all about, and and um, I'm just super grateful, and I'm, I'm gonna get on that. I'm a I'm a think worldwide. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, go ahead, finish your question. I'm sorry, I didn't want to cut you off. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. So as far as like, uh, I, I hear the talk of like, you know, Kajabi and all of these things being used. I'm hearing the funnel talks, and um, and you know, I'm, I'm up here with a lot of a lot of goats right now. Um, so as far as I think, a lot of people are scared to uh like you said you have to think big that consistency going into 2024 of like the online presence um you know just 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 a round table talk so how do you guys uh what's the like the, the best advice you can give for that consistency and that hunger online as far as just that online presence and how it relates to because it looks good online but that online presence with that paper presence you're mm. smashing your online your online grind I got Consistency. Just post every day. Yeah, you're the most consistent, bro. Just post every day. Like, a lot of people <laughs> do, like, you know, teaching y'all how to build your social media. Clearly, I teach that, too. But the easiest, the realest thing is to post every day. Post every single day. Show the consistency to the algorithm. They're going to automatically start putting you on the For You pages, on Explore pages, by you just showing consistency. Look at what's trending kind of as far as, like, angles. And, you know, clearly at right now, everybody wants to see – you with a phone or a microphone in somebody's face, that's going by with everywhere. So you can get one of your friends to do that with you just to promote whatever products or services you offer. I think it'll go crazy just to get eyes on you. And all content shouldn't be sales or marketing your business. Sometimes you got to get engagement just to get the people to follow for your actual um, product or services. So I do stuff that's like controversial every now and again. And then you'll have a million haters, but within that million haters, you'll get five million people that rock with what you got going on. So that's kind of how you got to think about it. The facts, the facts, Jess. And I also want to remind you that nobody can teach you how to have drive. That's got to come from within. Like you have to want it. That doesn't, regardless of what's going on, regardless of how you're feeling, you know, you have to want the outcome more than you want to give in to whatever your current challenge is. So you have to ask yourself, what is the alternative? What is the outcome if I don't show up? And do I want that? And if that outcome is not what you want, then show up and do what you need to do to get it done. Yep. Mm -mm. Good stuff. Does that help? 
Love, man. Love. Hey, the, the defense rest, man. The defense rest. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, come on to Atlanta, man. Let's get you in the hot seat, man. Come on, pull up. Thank you, brother. I appreciate all of y'all, man. No doubt, no doubt. Man, shouts out to these super chats. Oh, we got we got we got uh Janet Janice Coleman. Janice Coleman. Oh, what up? You in, you're here. Okay, that's what's up, man. Nella Mama. Which <laughs> Yo, what's crazy is I was like, I know that face. Uh, the, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We also Got another regular in here, Elisa Apple White. Hello, MMU current and future family with the fifty dollar free smoke chat. Man, thank you so much. That's so much love, man. You're gonna be so blessed. And we have Marsharee Cage with the hundred. Oh goodness gracious! Okay, look like I'm about to take the guests out to lunch. We got to go to lunch. Okay, Insane. put that on. Yeah, for sure. Anyone of y'all vegan? I don't go eat with vegans. <laughs> Y'all judge too much, you know what I mean? You vegan? You do fish? Okay, we cool again. You got the, the, the real one is the are you vaccinated? <laughs> it's like, do you right. you're vaccinated? I don't I'm a non vaxxer. Yeah. <laughs> All right, ne next question. Hey, send a text message if you want to call in. We will answer your questions live. Okay. Okay, question for you. How do we find the right coach that's going to take us to the Super Bowl? What are some criteria that we need to check off? I look at values. Mm -hmm. You know, do your values align with my values? Mm -hmm. You know, can you understand where I'm coming from? You know, do we not necessarily believe in the same thing, but have like the same principles around life? You know, because that's going to impact how you coach me mm -hmm. and what you tell me to do. It's going to impact how I execute as well. I also definitely look for receipts. You know, are you, Christ. do you know what you're talking about? Like, I think a lot of people um, get sidetracked because people sound good and they have the gift of gab without mm -hmm. actually taking the time to do the research to make sure that this person actually has a track record of doing the thing that they say that they do. Mm -hmm. And so you need to be able to see that in their life, in their business, and also reflect it through authentic clients who are not their friends. Yeah. You know, yeah. so mm -hmm. values, um, results, and those are the two com the, the, the two top ones. I will sit back and watch someone for months. Yeah. So that means that I will tune in to their live streams. I'm going to listen to them. Because I need to see how you communicate. I need to see how you explain things and whether or not you explain things in a way in which I understand. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, I, I just important. do my, I do my background research, That's you know, I, I will digest their free content. If they're doing some type of live workshops or even I will go to, because I need to see, because when I invest, I'm going to invest and I'm going to do the work. So I have to do my research on you. Ahead of time. So I'm going to sit back and watch somebody for at least three months. I like that. I like that. Push man, Mitch. How do we find the right coach, man? Because that's I, what's missing. That's the missing link in 2024 uh, for somebody. Find somebody coming back from where you're trying to go. Mm -hmm. uh, get a couple references. Find people like the social proof she said. Um, actually see if they know what they're talking about. If they do offer some type of free workshop, some type of uh, webinar, in-person events, go to the events so you can actually see what they're all about. And yeah. a lot of times, every time I've been to an in-person event for somebody else who's coaching, they always got people receiving rewards, like for a certain amount of money. I do that myself. Mm -hmm. Y'all want to come to mine, DM me the word new. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> we got a new year, new me <laughs> conference. But um, I give away a seven figure award, six figure award when you reach that amount of money after coming to my program. So you can see that other people have had success mm -hmm. with their program. And you, you can actually like the reference that they're going to tell you the truth. I would, you can go on people. If you, if they use social media, you can go in their DM. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go and look at their comments, see the people who bought their products, shoot them a DM. Mm -hmm. How did you like that program? You said you bought it, right? Man, they changed my life. Okay. That's one good one. Let me check that one off yeah. Two, And then you kind of go like that. I would say, just get like three citable references, go to an in-person event, follow them for a little while. I think that's a good point of reference. She said like about three months. That's, that's her joint. Me. I probably can only got to see a couple times <laughs> and I'm going to be like, all right, man, I'm ready to rock. But um, it just depends on, on how you move and how you look at investing in yourself. 
Yeah. Like for me, I'm the ultimate investment. So I'm investing every year. I always upgrade my iOS system. So depending on how you look at investing is, is kind of how you should do it. So me, it's like every year I'm making sure I know what's the latest, greatest on like go high level. A couple years ago, it was click funnels. We all got the plaques now. It's like mm. we, we had to invest in that to learn how to do it the right way. And then at some point, like next year, it's going to be something else. And we go, I'm going to invest in that. I don't, I don't want to be the last one with the YouTube information when, when Dave finally decides mm. to break it down to me. I'd rather go to when it's fresh and new and I can be one of the innovators in the, in the space. So that's kind of how I look at investing. Okay. I love it. Okay. So listen, man, uh, hopefully you guys understand how to find the right coach. We have a caller. All right. Preston, you are <coughs> on with David Free, at, in Free Smoke. Lord Jesus. Is that Preston? Preston. Preston, what's up, You're man? You're on. What's going on, family? How y'all doing today? We're awesome, man. That is a he. Yeah, that's right. That's why I want to make sure y'all understand. I'm all man. Turn up. <laughs> I'm all yeah. yeah. So uh, I appreciate y'all getting on here. I push my mentor and push man Mitch. Uh, what up, Preston? My, what's going on, man? <laughs> my my question is, how do you keep? How does entrepreneurs keep from having burnout? Mm, how do you keep from having burnout as an entrepreneur? <laughs> I wish is, I, is it to me? Is that question for me, Preston? Go for it. Go for it. That, he already on yeah, TMI. Hey, all, 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 all y'all are, uh, I'm, in, I'm in Dave Sands, MMU, so you know, all y'all are my mentors, you know. Gang, gang. So, yes, sir. Uh, this way. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just want, want everybody to kind of answer that question if y'all can in uh, some short <laughs> week because sometimes we, we go and we go and we keep going and then, you know, we got family, we got friends, we got uh all these communities that, that we're in, and sometimes burnout just take a toll on you. Just want to shut down. Mm. So how do you keep how do you keep going? We should start mm. with you, Dave. I got it. I got it. How do you prevent burnout? Right? You shouldn't. Mm. If you are not experiencing burnout, you're not doing anything, huh? <laughs> so I'm not saying you should live in burnout, but. I experienced burnout. Like I went hard. We like, yo, it's it's almost like, yo, how do you run a race and win the gold medal without getting tired? You don't. Like you, I want you to feel exhausted. I want you to be at the end of at the end at, at the finish line, like, oh, oh my God. Yo, I just want to thank my mom. Like that's that's how we should be. And if it, and I'm not saying you have to run the race back to back and every single day. But there needs to be a 90-minute sprint where 60 days in, 30 days in, you experience burnout. And those next two months have been the most grueling next two months of your life. But then you take a month of vacation. You go hang out with your family. You go chill. I'm not trying to prevent burnout. I'm not going to extend the burnout, right? But I go hard. If you don't, if you don't want to, if you want to prevent burnout, don't do no live events, first off. Don't do no launches of no products. Okay, don't do anything amazing if you want to prevent burnout. We are running towards burnout. And eventually, once you feel it, like if you feel like I just I just took a few days and went to uh, Jamaica because I just felt like the weight of the world was on my shoulders and I was experiencing burnout. But then I went on vacation for a few days. I took mad naps. I ate every couple hours at this resort. The food was so good. Oh, my gosh. And you go to the resort, and it's all included, and I order a few different entrees every time. Mm. Bite one, throw the rest away. I'm out here. We get, oh <laughs> we get money out here. Okay? Yo. Bring another. Right? And, and I, was, I was chilling, sat by the water, got in the water, sat by the beach, chilled. But in the time frame that I was chilling, I was imagining and planning for another season of burnout. I said, when I get back, it's on. And pop. It's up. I got my vacation. I got my chill time. Oh, but we going for burnout. Excellent. And we are going to run until I feel that burnout. But when I do, I'll have accomplished something. And then I'll take another trip. So we're not, we're not running away from burnout. I have a slightly different answer, y'all. <laughs> to my conservative teacher. You know what I mean? <laughs> Listen, no, like, 
in the beginning of my entrepreneurial journey, especially with all the things that come with having a family, I was definitely burned out. But I realized that that was not sustainable because consistent burnout can lead to stress. It leads to illness and all other types of things down the line. So for me, that wasn't how I wanted to live. Right. So what I started doing was that I planned out my year and part of me planning out my year before I plan anything business, I plan my personal life first. And part of me planning my personal life is planning the breaks and vacations. I know my rhythm. I've learned my rhythm. And so at least once per quarter, we're taking a break. I also created CEO days every single month where I'm not dealing with anybody. That's just my thinking time. And I've also given um, now my team, we have a mental health day once a month, every uh, the last Friday of the month for to to prevent that burnout because it can't happen. Right. So I think that if you're proactive with it and you strategically plan it, then you plan the business around those things. You can still do the launches. You can still do the Mm -hmm. events. So like for me, I know that we're doing, we have a scheduled launch. We're doing our launches on a certain week during the month, you know, on a, on a cadence. So this way it's planned. We're able to gauge what we're doing now for you, for many of you watching, not necessarily you, Preston, um, and thank you for the question because it's a great question. Um, but if you're still working a full-time job while you are also building your business, yes, you're going to be working your 9 to 5 and then working your 5 to 10 or your 5 to 11, whatever that looks like for you. But you still have to schedule in time for rest. I'm not trying to go religious or anything like that, but I put something on Facebook early this morning because I was up doing my morning devotionals and I don't know what y'all, you know, spiritual beliefs is, but I was reading the Bible this morning and it said for six days, God created. And then on the seventh day, he rested. Rest was a part of the system of creation. It was built in. It was scheduled in. So you got to schedule in your rest. Good. I love it. What's your name, Mitch? Hey, yo, Preston. <laughs> you know your coach, man. Sleep when you're dead. No, I'm <laughs> no but uh, how I look at it is, honestly, where I'm, it just depends on where you are at in your entrepreneurial journey. That's how I see it. Um, my life is 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 very fortunate. I like I'm every day is Christmas. Every week is my birthday. So I go to the spa. I go get my 60 minute foot. 90 minute body. I do that every week, three times a week. I go hoop. That's a stress reliever for me. But um, anything I want to do when it shows in town and go watch a game, I go do that. But um, the work is a part of my regimen. And I feel like I have a life like that because I, I can go hard like that. And that's what mostly everybody else is looking for a break. I don't need it. Like, that's how I kind of feel. And um, I look at the billionaires and millionaires that I look up to. They still work. They work and they go crazy. They're not retiring. So I feel like I'm doing on that same path. But, you know, I feel like in the beginning, when you first start as an entrepreneur, you don't deserve no break for real. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like you don't deserve Come to on, chill. Man. I don't feel like you deserve to relax. I don't feel like yeah. you deserve to go on vacation. I don't feel like you deserve the spa. I think when you receive that burnout and then you got the fruits of your labor, then you can start chilling and taking a uh, taking a day or a week or a couple of days off or something like that. But until you actually got something for that work, you just like everybody else then. You just chilling and you just yeah. taking breaks. Go hard and then, you know, after you you know, then find your little stress relievers. But me, I'm going hard at 365. Yeah. And then sure. uh, my breaks is in between that week while I'm working. Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm going to work in the morning. I know my, my shift is 7 to 3 or whatever the case may be, how I'm doing my work shifts. And then after that, I'm going to go chill. I ain't answering no phone calls. I'm relaxing. I'm big chilling. But, you know, it's it's back-to-back mm-hmm. days for me. Yeah. And and I am and I plan on doing it double this year. Oh, so I'm, I'm switching places with Dave right now, going to Jamaica, Tomorrow, I'll be there until the new year. Ain't no more vacations in, <laughs> in 2024. So, I, probably, I probably won't even take zero vacations next year. I'm going harder than I ever went. I'm trying to get a, hit a new marker next year. Um, I did eight figs in Rev um, last year. I want to do nine. And if, mm. I, if I can get it, I get it. If not, next year. I got a 10-year plan, but, you know, I might get lucky next year. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's what I'm on. That's, how, that's what I firmly believe in. Good. Jazz, when did you realize you uh, – you were like, yo, I need to slow down. 
It was um, during the pandemic, and my daughter asked. We were driving. And my daughter asked me. She said, um, "Mommy, if God told you to shut your business down today, would you?" Mm-hmm. You know, and they had been complaining about you're always working, always working, always working, and I want my children to be entrepreneurial as well. But I also did not want them to have a tainted view of entrepreneurship because meaning that if this is what it means to be an entrepreneur, always working, never, you know, neglecting the family, you know, they were go back to remembering how they felt. And that was the thing that changed me. I knew I needed to change, you know, I I knew that I needed to shift some things around. And so when she said that to me, that that's because I was eating, breathing, sleeping, yeah. My business at the time. I, I enjoyed what I did. I was great at it. I was helping people. I was working around the clock. Yeah. You know, um, but I had to change some stuff. You yeah. know, I, I had to. Yeah. I think if, if you talk to a lot of people that they obviously tell you to prioritize your health and your rest and kind of relaxation. But most of the people who talk from that perspective were people who went through that grind for years. Then they realized, yo, hold on. Mm-hmm. I, I I need to slow down. But being able to get to the point where I need to slow down, it took a period of like all in. You you feel oh, me? Absolutely. Yo, all yo, it was two and a half years of me working my job, building a t-shirt brand. I'm talking about every day. It wasn't no chilling. Wasn't no vacations. And everybody kept telling me, hey, you need, they didn't even like the name. So the name of the t-shirt brand, Sleep is for Suckers. And I defend it so often of people saying, yo, but you need your rest and you could die if you don't get your sleep. But no one super successful told me that. It was all your average person that's never accomplished anything that says, yo, you need, you can't be telling kids they need to not sleep. It was like none of my mentors warned me about the effects of giving something everything that I had and experienced burnout. Nobody talked to me about that. And my defense is, I want to one day eat right. But it costs money to eat right. And I could sleep all day right now and I could eat McDonald's for the next 15, 20 years because that's what I can afford. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go hard right now so that one day I can live a healthier lifestyle. I finally, yo, really, when I heard the phrase, earn your leisure, I got it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I had to earn it. So if you're, feel, if you're feeling burnout and you have not accomplished your goal, good. Now, sometimes you do have to, like, you're working, you're focused on something, and you got to step away from it, chill for a second, go watch some TV, get some ice cream, but get back to work. Just mm-hmm. so you can come back to the thing with fresh eyes, but don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of no burnout, man. Go hard. Experience. I want you to I want you to feel what it feels like to go all in. And some people never have that feeling. When they're tired, they go to sleep. Oh God. That's all right. a luxury. Yeah. I, oh my God. I wish I had that. Come on, man. man. Uh, does that help, brother? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I appreciate y'all uh for listening to me and asking those questions. Again, this is Preston Layton. I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a boy, I'm a boy, boy I'm a boy. <laughs> I am a boy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Man, appreciate you chiming in, man. All right. Uh, y'all take it easy. Yes, sir. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Preston. Before we bring on the next caller, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button, y'all. Shout out we to have, Super Chats, too. Oh, and drop God. those Super Chats, yes. Man, who, who, we had a couple come through. We have a couple. A couple. We got a few. We have Kaya. Thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you so much. The real Elisa Applewhite. She always coming through for the fam. All the way. Thank you so much. This is our next caller. I'll bring you on in just a minute, shorty. Uh, <laughs> Marsha Hey, Thank you so much for the yeah. super chat. Janice Coleman. Thank you so much mm-hmm. for the mm-hmm. super ca- chat. Mama. Thank you so <laughs> much. <laughs> <laughs> braids by joya bean thank you so much preston once again thank you so much for your super chat laurel thank you so much jake smooth lifestyle and let kids play podcast thank you guys so much we greatly appreciate your support and the kids are going to appreciate it even more all right 
But make sure y'all hit that that like button. We got 184 people on this live right now. Let's go. What's up? And we only got 75 likes, y'all. Come that on. Is oh, y'all gotta get them up. That don't even cost you nothing. Just hit that like button, y'all. Like literally, it's it's it don't a cost click. Nothing. It's a click. <laughs> All right. But next caller up, Marsha Ray, come on up. You are live with David and his friends on Free Smoke. What's up, Marsha Ray? Good morning. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Good morning. Where are you at? Good afternoon, rather. I'm sorry. I'm in Baton Rouge, so it's afternoon here. Okay, cool, cool, um, okay. And she pronounced my name right. Thank, thank you. Um, job, so <laughs> my question is, um, and I, I hopped on when I saw you had somebody from an education space, which is awesome. Um, I own a healthcare education or entry-level healthcare, healthcare education school. So we teach phlebotomy. We teach CNAs, we teach CPR, et cetera. But I want to transition. And um, my question is, how do I do that as far as getting into the corporate and college space? When I say getting into the corporate and college space, I mean um, teaching things like CPR in a corporate arena or personal development in a college space, things like that. Okay, so do you intend to shut your current business down or do you want to do the corporate work in a, in conjunction with what you're already doing? In conjunction. Okay, okay. So if you want to transition into the corporate space by, you know, going in to do training and development, the first thing that you should do is reach out to your network, right? Do you have anybody in your phone, anybody that you already know that's in that space that will bring you in? I think a lot of times we we ignore the power of our our immediate network. Ask. See who you are see who you're already connected to that's already in that space who can either bring you in or introduce you to someone, make a connection to someone who can bring you in. Okay. I can do that. I definitely have I have people in my network and when they see me, they are when we speak. And I guess that's because that's been the, the lane that I've been in. We've always speak. I have partnerships with hospitals and nursing homes and things in my area. And, you know, they are so hungry for CNAs and nurses right now. That's kind of all they talk to me about. Like, when is the next class coming out so we can hire them and get them working? So I can definitely I can definitely do that. Right. You can just let them know that you're expanding into the college space and you want to come in and do a training or you want to come in to do a talk or presentation. You know, who can they connect you with to make that happen? Awesome. That's good. That's good. Is that helpful? I almost asked you that, David, at the uh, Inspire conference, but you were talking to somebody at the time, and I didn't want to miss the person that was on stage, but I'm glad I got a chance to see you. Oh, so they was more important than me. It's cool. I mean, <laughs> I don't feel away. It's fine. <laughs> nah. I appreciate you calling in. Thank you. You're very welcome. Good stuff. Um, all right, so there's a missing piece. Shouts out to my brother Freddie, man. It's my guy right there. Uh Freddie with the 1999. Make sure y'all make sure y'all follow. Hey Freddie, make sure y'all put y'all y'all when y'all give a super chat too, make sure y'all put y'all Instagram. You know what I mean? So other people can follow you, okay? Uh so we talked about the missing link, okay? There's a missing link to your 2024. All right, what is clarity? You gotta gain some clarity. You're also gonna need some coaching. And now we need to talk about community. And I kind of want to know um, how you all look at the community that both of y'all have communities that you've created, right? From a coach's perspective, what is the type of community that you're looking to create? Like, what is the, the culture in the community? Let's go with you, Josh. Okay. <laughs> um, well... The type of community that we've created inside of Impact University, um, all I can say is I have amazing clients. Mm -hmm. They network well. They partner up. They do lives together. They do events together. They mm -hmm. support one another at their events, um, at each other's events. Um, they make introductions for one another. A lot of them 
put each other on their platforms as well or connect them to people who can put them on different platforms. And I think that that is, number one, remarkable, and number two, priceless. Mm -hmm. Because not only are you expanding your network, but now you're gaining friends and biz besties sometimes mm -hmm. for life. And they're helping you to position yourself and put yourself out there. Yeah. You know, so that's the type of community that we've created inside of my programs at Impact University, and that's what we're going to continue to do and just really, really build on that. Um, right. Part of what we've done to create that, I think, is me also standing in my authenticity, mm -hmm. like I spoke about earlier, but also being very selective on who we bring in. Yeah. You know, we don't have a lot of the crab in the barrels and all that kind of stuff. We, we just don't mm -hmm. because I'm not like that. And because we are very selective on who we bring in, we have applicate. You have to apply to be in our programs. You have to have um, s certain goals and even a certain background in even order to come in because right. we want to create a, a curated community so that we can accomplish our, our networking goals as well. All that's part of it. So we don't just let anybody in. Good. Um, and I think part of that too is my continued personal growth and development. Your community is going to reflect the type of person that you are. It's going to reflect the type of person that you are growing to be as well. You know? Yeah. And so when you want to create a very, uh, a, a nurtured community, in a very advanced community, you have to make sure that you're constantly advancing and always striving to be the best version of yourself. Love it. What's man, Mitch? What's the culture you create? Yeah, um, we got what is called a growing environment. And everybody's not used to a growing environment, so they got to get adapted when they join. So it's basically if somebody accomplishes something, everybody celebrates it. Uh, when somebody learns something, they teach everybody. Um, when uh, somebody has an opportunity, they give it to everybody. It's, it's a growing environment. So inside our groups, that's what we do. It's like I wanted to be a cheat code. So especially in the rental car space, I got, I got different communities, but I got a rental car. I got STR, which is Airbnbs. Clearly, I got digital products. But I put them in a group where if you're in rental cars and we got people all over the nation, mm -hmm. if you want to broker cars, you can broker cars all over the nation. Everybody drops their wholesale prices. And literally, when you go in a group, you can see, Oh, I got, you got this car in Cleveland. You got this car in D.C. And they can literally be sending their clients over there making money together all over the world. Yeah. So that's like a cheat code. And then, like, if somebody has one bank rep, like, this is what my students are literally doing right now. We do the Bank of America play to be able to get multiple cars under your business. One person has a personal rep that they use. And we sent everybody through that same rep. Everybody getting their cars through that same lady. She know the vibes. We getting the, we running the place. So that's pretty much what it is. It's like a cheat code and an opportunity to network. Like she was saying, like our community does do like calls without me. We have our own our coaching call set up for us certain times of the week. But then also they get together by themselves and they and they and they start doing their own thing, which is awesome. That's pretty much what you want. Cause I hate to be like, oh, I'm doing a mastermind in LA. And the only time a mastermind has been done amongst them is when I come. Like, won't you do one without me? And that's really the name of the game. So you can start that growing environment. Love it. Love it. So there are communities out there that are conducive to your growth. And there's a lot of resources that you're looking for on your own. Or I, I think coaching is important, um, but I think a community is more important. So there's only a few, there, there's only limited information you can get from me because that's all that I have. But if there are hundreds of people in this community, they're experiencing something else and they can kind of tell you, give you some resources and also there's inspiration in seeing how other people are operating and other people are winning. So those are the motivation. So you're, if you're in your room by yourself or you feel like you're on an island as an entrepreneur, it makes it very difficult to find inspiration. Because you might look at somebody that's like super high and, you know, somebody's running a $100 million business. You're like, yo, that's cool. But you still can't see yourself in that. Right. But if you have a community of people that there's some people that are right on that next level and they just left the level you're on. It's like, yo, I'm so inspired. I can do that because there's nothing super special about them that I don't have. So how do we find a community that's for us? Mm. How do we like how do we look for a community? I'll start with one. Um, you gotta be able to trust the leader. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to be able to trust a leader and the 
the I don't know if the word is continence, like your personality or your your spirit or your vibe. Is that is that continence? Huh? No. Um you're a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna say vulnerability. No, 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 no. Your disposition, is it? Like your attitude, aura, your like attitude, your, your vibe. energy, your What's energy. Good, like your, okay, we'll go with energy. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm trying, trying like intelligence. So your countenance. That's yeah. yes. That's what I said. That a voice word. Yes. <laughs> you, said you, you said continence. That's uh-huh. like how you use the bathroom. I think. Continence. Con- 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 I think that's continence. You know. First your countenance. Off, it's like your countenance. First it's, off. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, your yeah, yeah, disposition, how you carry yourself. Countenance is face. You a teacher too? Uh, she okay. knows. She knows the etymology of words. Okay, good. Oh, the what? The etymology? Oh, I'm not playing scrabble <laughs> with y'all. Anyway, <laughs> how the personality of the leader of the community is going to be the vibe of the community. Mm-hmm. So, if you are, if let's say for instance, somebody who's like really money, 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 all they think about is money. That is the vibe and tone that's going to be created in the community. I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm saying some of y'all need to be thinking about money, money, money sometime. Like I, the, the best thing that could ever happen to me is in business is I started getting around Neo. Neo thinks money, money, <laughs> money, 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 money. And, and money. he's uh, am I right? And money. <laughs> and money. Also, don't forget the money. Oh, God. That's his lo- that's his thing. Like he's play he loves the game. And the money is the score. He has more than enough right now, but he keeps going because he knows that he can do better and he can make more. The best thing that can happen to me is getting around Neo because he's thinking, where's the money? How can we make more money? And before that, I wasn't thinking, how can I make more money? I was cool with helping more people. And because I got around someone that's like more money driven, I was able to adopt some of that philosophy and some of that thinking. And then I joined the community where we're thinking about oh, the, the testimonials in the chat aren't, oh, this is how I feel today. I feel amazing. It's, yo, look what I did financially. So once I got around that, I started thinking, yo, how can I make more money? I need to make some more money. I need to be more, I need to aggressively go after this particular goal. Now it doesn't make me super money hungry. But it does help me acknowledge, yo, there's some money out there that I need to go get. And once I started getting around him and his friends and Pushman Mitch, okay, because he always got a really nice car, I started making more money. <laughs> like, simple as that. There was, there was some element of me that needed a community of people that think money. Now, I think uh, Neo, in his defense... He's getting, he has like a relationship coach and he's like, yo, he told me yo, I'm very intentional about getting around marriage and, you know, being a better husband and stuff like that. Because one part of him says money, 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 money. He knows he got to put himself in an environment that says husband, 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 husband. And now he's becoming a better husband and he's going to church, things of that nature. Not being able to see my brother's evolution, but um, the, I, I'm looking at whoever's putting it together. I hope they have something that I need and it's probably going to be uncomfortable. Just because you don't like the person's personality doesn't mean you don't need to be a part of their community. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have that thing that makes you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So um, I I love to hear from you all, how do we identify what community is for us? Well, for me, it goes back to identifying the coach that you need. Mm -hmm. You know, um, what coach do you need in that season? It's not always for a lifetime. It's for a season, you know. And so looking at what your goals are, who is going to be the best person for me to align with and to connect with to help me accomplish this goal. Mm -hmm. And I know that if they have a community, then those people in that community likely are trying to do that same thing, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, I actually just wrote a post about the power of community yesterday because I've been talking about my podcast that I'm launching and um, in the community that I'm in, there's a, a doc, Dr. Una. Shouts out to Dr. Una. She had like 400,000 <laughs> downloads on her podcast, you know. And, um, oh, yeah, I got some. Yeah. And it's all audio-based. So I reached out to her. I was like, hey, you know, thank, I appreciate the word of encouragement, you know. 
I'm starting my podcast. She was like, hey, let's hop on a call. When are you free? I'll give you some tips. Real, Love just it. like that. 20 minutes. I got over 100 topics for the next year. Wow. And the system and all the things. But, and, and that just goes to the power of community because we're in the same community, you know, working towards the same things. Mm -hmm. And because of that, there's support there. There's an openness Absolutely. and willingness to share. And it was on the house. I told her, I said, you know what? Well, let me, you know, if I need to send you something, let me, or at least let me take mm -hmm. you out to, to lunch. Thank you for taking the time to share that with me because you don't have to share that with me. Yeah, for sure. You know, but it's just all in alignment with where you're trying to go, yep. you know, and yep, you connect to the community of the coach that you select. That's typically how I do it. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't go anywhere looking for community yeah. or looking for friends. I'm looking for outcomes. Yep. And the people that I connect with are all, uh, they're trying to go in the same direction mm -hmm. I'm trying to go in. Mm -hmm. Or I'm not not trying to. They're going in the same direction I'm going in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I think this, we got a caller, but um, I think this is a good time for a short commercial break. <laughs> if you are looking for a community, you should really, really consider themorningmeetup.com. We are a community of hundreds of entrepreneurs that gather every single morning. Every morning, right? Monday through Friday. And I'm on this call every day, okay? So like I was talking about earlier, I committed to the morning meetup, and I can see myself joining this call every single day for the rest of my life. And some people say, well, how can you commit to that? Well, I need a community. Like, it's not, I think people look at it like the people that join Morning Meetup need me. Well, I need y'all more than you need me, believe it or not, right? Mm -hmm. I have some information. I get to talk about my goals and how you, I need to be held accountable. And then Nella and Jay and uh, Cynthia and all these different people who are on the calls hold me accountable and we hold them accountable. And we have this community. We get, we get together every single morning. Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it's less than a PlayStation for the year. It's $497 for the entire year. We will have 250-something calls every single year, and I'm on there Monday through Friday. Uh, I'm discussing some sort of topic, either me or uh, one of my successful friends. Both of y'all have been... I spoke. You spoke, right, on the morning meetup? No, you, you asked me. Yet? No, not yet. You asked me to, but I had to take the kids to school. But I'm down now. Okay, all right. So, um, yeah, well, this, this month, at some point, we'll, we'll get you on. Uh, Pushman Mitch has been on plenty of times. Beautiful community. My, <laughs> all, look, half the people that's been on Social Group Podcast have been on the morning meetup, and I'm able to introduce my audience to these people personally, okay? But if you ever want to connect with me, be a part of the morning meetup. The morning meetup, we got together in Atlanta last week. We did uh, two weeks ago where we, uh, it was so dope. It was a strategic workshop for mapping out the 2024 year. And we sat there, it wasn't a vision board party, it wasn't speaker after speaker after speaker after speaker. We mapped out 2024 together from 10 to three, fed everybody, it ain't cost them nothing. People on Zoom from across the country, it was with us. This was a work session. This is what we need to do. If you have any questions, you just ask a question. But we're actually doing it again February 1st, right? And this is all free. Like, it's, it's, it's all included in the membership. So uh, make sure you go to themorningmeetup.com. If you're looking for a community to join, we meet every single day. Okay? And we do a book club. Yes. Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday. Don't show up Saturday, Sunday, because you're going to be the only one there. The only yes. one. Okay. <laughs> Nella, uh, before you bring, bring on the uh, speaker, let's get a little morning meetup testimonial going. You're yes. In the um, so Jay Star and I have both been a part of the morning meetup for what three years now? It'll be four, It'll be four years in March. We we have been a part of the morning meetup. I am the hostess with the mostess of That's the morning meetup now, but <laughs> but of course, when we first started, we had so much stuff going on. We were doing this, we were doing that, everything up under the sun. David gave us one conversation, and when that conversation happened, we zoned in. We had started our Airbnb business in the first month. We had made twelve thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollars with our Airbnb business. Come on. Got the got the property and started moving. Since then, we have both decided to liquidate the business, but we have amazing businesses now. 
that are thriving and moving forward. And we have made amazing connections. And because of that, we had to make the move down to Atlanta because our our area mm-hmm. was not was not conducive to where we wanted to be. Yep. So. Let's get it. Let's get it, man. Join the community, y'all. Who we got? Another. They hung up. Really? <laughs> yeah. The commercial was too long. <laughs> oh, that sucks. That sucks. Yeah, come on, call back, call back, call back. All right, Push Man Mitch. Yes. Um, I, I, I don't think you got a chance to uh, talk about how to find the right community for mm. you. All right, so right community. I, I feel like I'm going to deviate a little bit. Finding communities is probably one of my favorite things to do. I actually buy communities, too. So I think it's a, it's a numbers game for oh, me. Tell me more. Yeah, doing? yeah. so, you know, you can go on and join Facebook groups and – so my play was, at first, this is what I learned before I started buying them. You could join Facebook groups that are in alignment with what you want to learn about. For me, I do, you know, short-term rentals, so I join, like, the traveling nurses. I join all of the different programs similar to these things. And I join a bunch of these groups, and I provide value inside of them. Mm-hmm. And those communities, slowly but surely, come become my communities. So that's how I get more followers. I get more people to join my programs because oh, wow. I just go into these groups, and I don't say follow me. I provide value inside of them. Yeah. So whatever I learn that week, I just put like, yo, look, da, 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 da. I give them some free information inside of these groups with thousands of people inside. And then every time at the end, I just got, I got my gram on there. But I'm not saying follow me, but you can see that that's my uh, handle. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's a very indirect little. I hope y'all taking notes, man. Yeah, this that's a, a game that's right a, here. That's yeah. a play. This but I joined, game. it's so many uh, Facebook groups that you can join. It's insane. And like they're they're large. So I go in there and I do that and I get lots and lots of followers, lots and lots of people to join my community and um and, and I join my page. Eventually sometimes they become, you know, customers. But uh also what I do is I go buy Facebook groups as well. So I go to I, I just DM the people who are the admins, I ask them if they could sell the group, and a lot of times it's very, very inexpensive. And I'll be like, damn, I can take these twenty thousand people right here. And just and then be able to control the people who come in and go out. And of course, I can drop commercials in that thing and be like, "Yo, <laughs> hey, look, man, appreciate y'all being in the group, man. Just as a promotion, I can do it from the admin perspective, yeah. and everybody trusts the admin, and I can, you know, this good game, yeah, cheat, right cheat, cheat, cheat code, yeah. cheat code status. Trust me, I've been doing it for years. Cheat they be code. like, Mitch, you don't be doing a webinar, so do I? <laughs> <laughs> it's a fact. I love it, Nella. What's up? All right. She is back with us. Patricia, you are on live with David on Free Smoke. What's up, Patricia? Hey, David. I am such a huge fan of the Thank Social you. Proof Podcast. I've been a fan for a long time. Thank you so much for the value that you share. Thank you. So I wanted to kind of talk about, um, I've been in business for five years in an industry that is completely unknown to most, but I'm in the estate sale industry and I'm actually the only black-owned estate sale company in the state of Texas. Hold on. What, are, what does the so, estate sale do? So estate sales, we sell the contents of people's homes when they pass away. Oh. So I sell their cars, their RVs, their diamonds, their jewelry, clothing, furniture, everything. Mm. And I get a nice percentage off of that, those sales. So I've done over 500 homes. And people oh. always ask me, they're like, how did you get into this? And so this year, I wanted to launch my coaching part of my company. But I will say that it's been a challenge trying to find the balance between actually doing the work and uh, creating and building a community of people who want to be students of the work. Mm -hmm. How do you you find the balance? So you're teaching people how to get into the estate sale business. Yes. And you're having a challenge actually being a practitioner, like doing the work and also building a community of people that you're teaching how to do the work. Absolutely. Okay. You know, just really being able to find that balance between the two. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, do you need to build a community? I mean, I feel like it would be essential for people. I think the biggest thing is people don't even know what it is. Yep. So I kind of use my platform to, teach people like, hey, this is what an estate sale is. This is why people have them. You know, it's a multi-billion dollar industry, but it's quiet. Um, so, you know, I've never heard anybody talk about it on any of the podcasts. And I'm like, golly, this is an amazing way to create revenue. Um, it's just a skill set that you need to have. And if I could teach more people how to do it, you know, it would, you know, 
open up doors for so many. I just do don't you make, know. Do you how make good to, money doing it? Oh my gosh, I make well over seven what? every year. Oh my god, that's lit. Someone's every like, year. oh my god, it's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. So my my question for you is, do you when you say building a community, are you saying you want to create a program and charge people? I do. I okay. do. And okay. I mean, I've developed a course, but, you know, I don't know if that's like the best thing right now since the course industry is kind of declining. I just really want to know the best way to, to, to take this to the next level. Um, well, I do want to share with you, man. Sometimes it's okay to just do something well. You don't always have to teach people. Mm. It's okay. So, I mean, everybody that does something well is this idea like, yo, I'm going to start a course and I'm going to start teaching it. But that may take you away from the business that's working. Right. Everybody that's right. building a restaurant doesn't need to stop and teach people how to build a restaurant. You need to spend all your time and energy figuring out how to make this restaurant more profitable. Now, if it's like you have this desire to do it and you feel like you can handle it, um, go for it. But I just want to make sure before we even answer the question, um, why are you going that direction? when you're running a seven figure business now? Well, because people ask me to produce the service or perform the service nationwide. And I, and I don't even have people that I could really legitimately refer people to a lot of times. So I'm like, if I could teach people the way that I do it nationwide, then I can refer them to clients all over the place. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, I just want to lay that foundation. Y'all want to, you want to chime in? Um, <laughs> if, all right look i mean i look at it the same way but different because you know how i am you know how basically it's the attention thing so if you want to keep doing what you're doing you're going to miss out on time from the original thing that you were doing so that's the reality if you're doing it good mm -hmm. just like anything else that you ever do if you want to do it good you're gonna to have to put attention behind it and focus yep. so it is a course like you said the course the course industry is declining that's actually not true it's no. courses courses are being bought every day and night, but it's, it's the part before that is establishing your credibility online, then selling the course, having actual notoriety and like receipts. So that part is a little bit more difficult because you got to build credibility when everybody is talking down to this industry. So the courses aren't declining. Oh, well, at least for me, I don't know about you, Dave. I don't really sell courses. <laughs> he is not really a course guy. So me, yeah, of course. I mean, that's not even the initial thing. But my focus want to be like to answer your question is to say, if you want to switch and pivot your your attention away from it to build something else up, that's going to actually be good. Because you could sell one or two courses or have one or two mentorship or one or two events. And that'd be one thing like that you do like annually, semi-annually. But if you want to focus on actually building something that's like can replace or supplement that income then you that's something that you got to think about if you want to change that focus. But because if that is the case, I can easily help you do that. I mean, yeah. it takes two seconds. For sure. For sure. You got anything, Jess? Well, yes. What I heard her say was that she's getting inquiries from all over and she doesn't ha currently have the capacity to fill them. And so instead of creating a coaching program to teach people, you can just build out an agency. Right. You can build out an agency where now you have other agents who will handle things or who will handle those um, who will handle those such sales in the different locations for you. They may get a commission off of it or whatnot, or you paying them a salary, but it's still under the umbrella of your business. Mm -hmm. yep. Good I guess deal. the question is, do you want to would you rather hire an employee or have somebody pay you a couple of dollars to build out their own thing, right? Because you can, you're can you going to have to teach them the game anyway. But a person who teaches the game, to be your, like a staff member, will help you make way more money. Unless you just want to be a coach and you want to be that, you know what I mean, that deal in the space. So, you got a question? Right. I just thought of... I'll give the mic. Hold on. Try the mic. I just thought in, a, in addition to... Um, what was already said, that she could possibly either license or franchise. For sure. 100%. And if she has a solid program, franchise it out and allow the people to manage, but she has to manage the brand. 
Yeah. It just but stuff that, that she something. can do so many things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she, if, if you really want to go into the coaching space, well, you're just going to have to hire. Take some of the money from that business and have someone running the community. So really, if you can commit to a day of creating content, creating ads, things of that nature, and you hire somebody that knows what they're doing in the ad space, and you have you already shot the course, you're saying? Yes. Okay. Um, do you have the structure of the community? Like, this is going to be how much it costs, and this is what you get? Right, I do. Okay. Tell me about it. So, uh, it is a, a course where I certify a person to be able to perform these services. And they not only be, get the course study, they also become a part of my referral network. So okay. they so can basically y'all, y'all meet, graduate. I'm sorry. Y'all meet on a regular basis? Right. We meet weekly with okay. the students that I have now. How mm-hmm. much is it? $750 for my course, which huh? is very low. I'm sorry, how much? $750. For you meet every week? We meet every week. And that's for how long, though? So is that 750 a month? No, no. That's for the life of the course. And being a part of the community, you get referrals. So after you graduate the four-week course, then I start sending you referrals. We meet weekly just to talk about trends in the industry and how to promote the brand. Mm. For life? Y'all meet for life? <laughs> for for yes. life? For yes. life. I, I mean, I wouldn't recommend that at all. Yeah, man. I wouldn't either. I wouldn't recommend it at all. Just, just oh, right, at least, memberships. I mean, I, I like that price point isn't bad. 750 is a great price point for a, a digital product, and for, especially if you can you can sell it consistently. But as far as the community part, um, I think that's something that either has to be recurring for them to be involved in mm-hmm. or, you know, have a duration for sure. I mean, that's just my advice on that. Sure, I'm going to do a morning meetup every day for the rest of my life. However... <laughs> <laughs> That joint going to have to hit on a regular basis, y'all. So, um, yeah, I, that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we have a we have a community. It's like a podcast community where we're just, we're teaching podcasting. It's a thousand dollars for the year, and we jump on a call once a month, like the first Friday of every month. We we got it. We gave them the course. The information's amazing, and we'll continue to add content. But we meet once a month, first Friday. We do Q&A, answer all their podcast questions, but it's a recurring yearly membership. So I think you just need a little bit of structure on it so that it makes sense for your lifestyle. Right. Because you're about to, you're about to be so distracted from your million-dollar business to make a few thousand dollars a month that it's like you... It's yeah. just, then you're yeah. you going to lose money, though. That's the thing. Like People don't understand about mm-hmm. courses and coaching programs. We pay for all of these systems and services. Like We got to pay for Zoom every month. If you got a platform like Kajabi, you got to pay for that every every month. You got to pay for tele like not Telegram, but you got to pay for just the different networks that you put these host these calls on. So I'm not about to be ended up going bankrupt for y'all. I like y'all and all yeah. that, but at the end of the day, it's, it should make sense both. It should be an even exchange. Yep, absolutely, that makes sense. Thank you okay. so much for having me, y'all. You're David, very you need to get the show to talk about estate sales. More people uh, need to know. Are you about in the morning meetup? I am. That's what's up. That helps. That helps. <laughs> okay. Yeah, send, yeah, send me a DM. We'll check it out, okay? For sure. All right. No call? Who was it? David Smith. David Smith? Mm-hmm. David Smith, you called and hung up? What's up, bro? His girl called him. You know what I mean? All right. <laughs> so, the missing link of 2024. It could be your clarity. could be your coaching. It could be the fact that you don't have a community just yet. Um, but next is going to be conviction. And I think you all are going to have to take this one because I don't know how to teach someone how to be convicted. And I don't know how to teach someone how, how to have that hunger to be consistent, to mm-hmm. get up every single day and do it. I don't know how someone can look at their kids and – and not want to be around more. You know what I mean? So I'm not saying I'm around my kids all the time, but I get home about 4 or 5 o'clock. If it's time to take a trip or vacation, we going because we can spend that time with our children. But there are some people that work nonstop. Think about this scenario. There are some people that work 
long hours. Wake up in the morning, kids sleep, you go to work, and you don't come home until 7, 8, some people 9 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. you, you eat, tuck your kids in to bed for an hour or two. And you only see your kids an hour or two every single day. Listen, we got we to gotta go hard. There has to be some. You have to say to yourself, there's something wrong with this. Like, you keep missing your kids' games and stuff. You got to say, like, there's something wrong with this. You work morning shift. Your spouse works night shift. Y'all keep missing each other. And maybe there's one day y'all got off together. Like, you have to say to yourself, there's something wrong with this, and I want more out of life. But I don't, I, I don't know how to teach someone to hear that. So uh, let's take this call, and then we'll have the conversation about conviction. Who we got? All right. First and foremost, we're going to tell this caller thank you so much for all of the support because you be dropping these super chats. And, Gotta of course, my dog. you Gotta already my know dog. who it is. Elisa Applewhite. Come on up, sis. Hey, family. How y'all doing? <laughs> Amazing. Hey. How are you? Awesome. Uh-oh. Yeah? She's still there. She might be driving. She always driving. Elisa? That Bluetooth. We Art thou there? Can you hear me? No, I can hear you now. Okay, so the we have the MMU um, Charlotte chapter. So the morning meetup Charlotte chapter. If he want to um, join MMU, he'll get to actually meet family where we'll support him as well here and in the Charlotte like, area. Charlotte's in the building. <laughs> gang, gang. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So the, the question, <laughs> the question that I had is. Um, once you are coaching your mastermind or your inner circle, are there any specific activities that you have your members to do to keep the group like lively and active? Um, yes. You got to think through that. Um, uh, we have like different uh, uh, segments. So, you know, in the morning meetup, we got a book club, right? Mm -hmm. and the way it's designed is right from eight to eight, I mean, from 7.45 to 8, we discuss the book club, right? We discuss the book. So we have a book club, and we'll read a chapter, and that chapter gets discussed the next morning, right? So the reason we do it, I want everybody to keep reading, but we got to start, we got to keep engaging with the book, not just read it. So we want to make sure everybody's on the same page. So these are some of the things you got to think through of, how can I get people involved and not just listeners, so we're doing a thing that's coming Friday, uh, February 1st. That's, that's me saying, I need to make sure everybody's still woke, not just jumping on a call every day. So you need to figure out how, and I don't know what your, uh, you know, how you can do it for your community specifically, but you gotta make sure everybody's awake and they're like, they're having a good time. So I think maybe some of y'all got something to share on that? Yeah, I mean, I. It's, it's a bunch of different ways, and it all depends on which group we're talking about. Like, I got – and also, the higher – the more a person pays, the more active they're going to be. I'm just going to put that out the, out the top. If they My people who pay me 25K, they active every day. They come to every call. They come to every in-person right. event. But uh, so for the people, my most inexpensive group, I, have to, I had to really, really think about how to make it creative because they're not paying a lot. So, therefore, it's just like if I pay somebody $100 today – and the event is two months from now, I might not show up. That's just a fact. So basically, what they get for us is we give them replays of our mentorship calls. They can't actually be on them, but they get to look at those replays. And that's about twice a week. They get to look at those. They get a Q&A once a month. Um, they also get like a half off of in-person events. Um, so it's a, it's, it's a very active because they, they get to look at coach calls and we discuss those calls. And, I, and my, uh, my virtual assistants will basically drop like homework in there for them to uh, – do as well, and then we talk about whatever's going on with the homework. So that's just different creativity things you can like throw in there if you want. Love it, Jazz. You got something? Yeah. So for me, we do what's called for client fulfillment events, which are events that are strategically placed um, every other month or once per quarter, where we meet virtually to do a community training around a specific topic, and it's a full day training. So like right before we broke for our winter break, we did our, we did a two day, um, 2024 strategic planning. Mm -hmm. So day one of that 
was me teaching how to plan. And then day two was the implementation and the virtual co-working of that. So we do strategic virtual events and in-person events for our clients. And also within the community, yes, you know, we, we do the, um, we do the, you know, the regular Q and A's and things, but within the program we have what's called milestones. So the milestones are specific things that they have to complete in order to reach their goal. These are like, Hey, mile marker one, mile marker two, I'm getting closer. And they come in typically will share their milestones in the group. Um, we also will have a milestone badge or specific activities that they're supposed to complete at the milestones. And when they share those out, that helps to keep them engaged as well. Love it. Love it. Good stuff. Hey, listen, this is a three hour show. I'm going to eat. <laughs> Don't be boozy. Y'all want some of these chips? Get down. Mm -hmm. right, we're going to wrap up in a little bit. Um, we good? We got another caller? No, we good. Okay. All right. So, conviction, which is a firmly held belief or opinion. I think that's the definition. A firmly held belief or opinion. Before we start teaching how to have conviction, I want to know. Do either one of you remember when you said, I'm here and I'm not going anywhere? Do you remember any moments that really turned the corner for you? Yep. Yo, when I start, when I was driving Uber, I was smelling blood, yo. I ain't even going to cap. I'm driving Uber. So I just, I worked at the jail. My last job before driving Uber was a correction officer. So I was making pretty good money. And then with, over time, I could do over 100K. Just literally going crazy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they taxing it. It don't matter. I was coming home with 16. <laughs> but, uh, but either way, I made pretty good money. Like for, you know, an average guy, you know, in my, I was 24, 25 years old. You know, that was pretty solid. So mm -hmm. long story short, I quit that job and I end up driving Uber and I end up making, you know, a lot more than I was making there. Even with overtime, whatever. I'm driving mm -hmm. every day. I'm making like $2,800 a week on average. Sometimes I would make more. But uh, either way, I'm like, damn, the more I drive, the more I make. So now I'm smelling blood. I'm like, damn, if I figure out this entrepreneur thing mm -hmm. and you go from getting paid, you know, 12 times or 24 times in 365 days to getting paid every single day, it, it'll strike a light bulb. So I remember, man, I, I made, I had $15,000 cash and I never had that before. And I was like, oh my God, I'm about to figure this out. And I just had one car on Toro and it was bringing him like $4,800 a week. I'm at $4,800 a month. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get it. So then I, I worked on my credit and I just, I just you know any, my, my girl at the time was telling me something crazy. She's talking about, I think I'm making money, but I'm really not. And I'm like, I got 15,000 in my pocket. <laughs> you know what I mean? But at that time, like no matter. So it was two things happening at the same time. People, everybody was doubting me and what I was doing and it was working at the same time. So now I'm just like, I'm smelling blood and I also know not to listen to nobody else. Yeah. And I just went hard. So after that, it was over. It was over. So that was my turning moment. And then I just kept going up every year from now. It was over. Now I smell the same blood today, but I just make more money at, while I'm doing it. And it's, yeah. it's insane. Love it. Yes. So you remember when you just felt, okay, this is, and maybe it's not about business, but you like felt a conviction about something. Yeah. I had two defining moments. The first defining moment that I had was when I made my first $300 off of something that I had already done for free. <laughs> and I did it from home. Like, for real, like, it. I was in the very beginning. I had done this 21-day challenge. I had ran it for free. We had, like, over 400 people that signed up. And then at the end of it, I was like, okay, well, this was great. I had all these testimonials, and I didn't have anything to show for it. And so I, I paid, like, $300 for a course. And um, shouts out to, uh, in remembrance of uh, Cece, the six-figure chick. She, I, I had taken a class with her. Oh, wow. And uh, she was like, yeah, you got to have something to sell at the end of it. She was like, you showing up live for 21 days <laughs> for free? Absolutely not. And so people who had ran, who had participated in that workshop asked me to do it again for the spring. Because I had done it at the beginning of the year. They asked me to do it again for the spring. Well, this time, instead of doing it for free... I charged for it. I charged $10 for it. That was all I could muster myself to charge at the time. <laughs> I charged for it, and 30 people joined and paid the $10. Yeah. And I had made $300 doing to teach something again that I had already nice. taught for free. And I was like, hold up now. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I didn't have to leave home. 
And so we did the challenge, and then from that, I upsold a membership community, and then I had monthly recurring revenue. And that's how I got started. And I was still teaching at the time. So for me, that was like a light bulb. Yeah. Like, you don't have to go get a part-time job. You don't have to do all this. Like, you can make it work from packaging your intellectual property and delivering it well and helping people get a result. And you can do it from home, which for me was huge. You know, it was huge and very important because I had small kids at the time, yeah. you know, and my husband traveled for work. The second defining moment was the time when I had transitioned out of my career as a teacher and I had become I had become a full time entrepreneur working in my business. And I was working every day, working every day, working every day. And that's when it clicked like this is what you got to do. This yeah. is what you're going to do. And especially when you started realizing, okay, well, insurance, dental insurance, all, it's, it's no more I, I got to get it. It's, I, I am the job. Yeah. Okay, let's make it happen. You know, mm -hmm. that's when things started. Uh, that, that's, that was my second defining moment. I love it. I love it. I think, yes, yeah, I call Okay. Um, I think it's important that we got to start um, just, like, let, let life hit you. You know what I mean? I think I got that from Jim Rohn. He said, let life affect you. Like when something happens, experience, be in the moment. This is a challenge that I've always had um, because it's turning my brain off and to allow me to process what's happening right now. There's a couple of times that I just had to embrace. It's just an ugly scenario, man. Um, just a, I'll, I'll tell this, I'll tell the story. Um, I'll tell the story after this caller, but I just remember certain times in my life where something happened and I just had to sit there and like, okay, this is happening. But never again, never mm -hmm. again. I, I remember a time having, to, like looking in the back seat. And I just remember this one time very vividly. I don't know why it just happened. Uh, uh, why this one time stuck in my mind, but I remember looking back in my back seat at this gallon of water that's always in my back seat on the floor behind the passenger seat and I just realized that this was my life I'm always going to have to have that gallon of water in the back seat and if you know you know <laughs> if you've ever driven a car where is a requirement to have a gallon of water in your car during the summertime y'all been there yeah yeah, yeah I mean when when that when that when that eradicator got a slow leak, <laughs> let it get you right for a second. But come on, you got to have you got to have it. I just remember this one time looking back, like yo, this is, I can't believe that's a part of my checklist of getting in my car. And I just remember it was a turning point for me. Now, look who we got. All right, we have another MMU alum up on here right now, gang, gang, gang. gang. <laughs> M U. <laughs> Fix it. That's not even an M. M U. Like, what are you doing right now? <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> but Freddie, you were on with David and friends on Free Smoke. Freddie from uh, hey, uh, King's David Chamber Beard Oil. What's everybody, up, everybody? Nella J. Everybody, Bell. How y'all doing? What up? What up? <laughs> how you feeling? We appreciate oh, the, the love with super chats, man. All right, all right, got to anything for the kids, but uh, <laughs> I got I got a quick question, and I think um this will not only help me, but it'll help others because of the fact that I believe it's important that we understand that just because you like a coach and you're following a coach doesn't necessarily mean you're going to qualify to actually be coached by that individual. So what do I need to do in order to qualify to be coached? by, um, you know, these amazing coaches that are out here that are actually getting receipts, that are actually getting results, doing this for real. How do you qualify to be coached by a good coach, yeah. are you saying? Yeah. Okay. Right, anybody got something on that? Oh, well, I, I can speak to that because we do have um, applications for our programs and we don't just accept anybody. So, the first thing to do is to determine whether or not the coach that you want to work with has a qualifier and identifying what that qualifier is, right? You know, so that qualifier could be an income level. Like, did you 
make less than $80,000 in your business last year? Or did you make at least a million dollars in your business, right? So there are, there, some programs have income qualifiers, right? One of the things that we do um, in, in one of my programs in, in the uh, Published and Paid Academy is that we work with leaders who want to write books. So one of the qualifiers for that is that I don't work with people who just want to tell their story or write children's books or no, like you have to be in some type of executive position or have some type of leadership or business background. Right. And you want to not just write a book, but write a book to grow a business. That's a qualifier. Right. Um, and so you just have to determine for you, if you want to create a program, what the qualifier is going to be for your clients to work with you. And if you want to work with a particular coach, you have to determine whether or not they have a qualifier and what that qualifier is. And typically, if they have some type of application barrier, there's some type of qualifier. It could be income level. It could be, um, it could be topic specific. It could be experience wise. You just have to do your research and ask. Love that. And uh, I'll piggyback. Um, how pretty much I can coach thousands, millions, really. But mentorship is a little bit more personal. Yeah. So, you know, we can coach. This is technically coaching right here. Right. But mentorship, um, that's where it's going to be a qualifier. And I'm not just taking anybody. And clearly there's a, a monetary uh, thing that you have to accomplish. But that comes with a mindset, too. Yeah. So you're not going to just pay ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 for no reason. That's that's a particular type of person who's already right. ready to do something like that. I don't even pitch that to everybody. It's not even something that we have a conversation about. And I will tell you, a hundred percent of my high ticket mentees came from my low ticket program. Mm. So they normally come in entry level and learn and actually get results from the uh, the lower group coaching. And then when it's time for them to sign up for like a one on one type of mentorship or a higher ticket thing. That's when they're like, okay, this already worked for me. I made some money learning, so I'm ready to go all in. And then they, they want more time and more access. So it just depends on what type of access you want to the coach or mentor. And then, you know, also something that I do, I personally do this myself. When people try to reach out to me to come to in-person events, like, because I do free events every now and again in different cities. Or if they want to get like a win a giveaway, I look at their actual profile. I look at how they carry themselves, like how they pre like their what is their perception out to the aesthetic eye. So I basically say, okay, this dude got his middle fingers up. He's smoking in every picture. Mm -hmm. I probably don't mm -hmm. want him to come to the event. You know what I mean? She's dancing, you know, on a pole somewhere. <laughs> I'm not gonna probably. It's probably not gonna be the right energy for the event. Mm -hmm. So you know, be be cautious of uh, how you carry yourself. And if you you're taking yourself seriously as a business professional. Your page should look something like how you want people to think you are. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be accurate, but it should be what you want people to perceive you as. So that's one thing that, that probably could help you out. I don't know if it did, but hopefully, yeah. That, that was so good that you mentioned how people brand themselves online. Because, yes, there, there is a certain type of person we typically look to work with when we're working with people um, intimately. Right. And I think a lot of people don't consider that. We also look at how people even answer questions on the For application. Sure. That's a big one. Like, do you, are you writing in complete sentences? Are you following directions? Can we <laughs> comprehend what you're saying? Like we look at like down to the, it, it's very granular because we, we understand what type of mindset you're going to have to have to be successful and, 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 and to accomplish the outcome. So we look at everything. Yep. No, yes. Yeah, a fact, that was a big one. Cause I ain't gonna lie. I got a questionnaire. <laughs> like right now, I'm taking two students. Right, I take I open it up for the whole year, four people, but I only got two spots left. So basically, I put up a a post about how I'm taking two students for the year. It's gonna be open. Um, let me know if you cash ready, right? And they DM a certain word. When they DM this word, I send them a questionnaire. When they answer these questions, off the how they answer the questions, I'm automatically disqualifying them. Mm -hmm. You probably don't qualify for this particular program. Let me put you in something else. Or we just say, look, it's probably not the right move for you right now because we already filled the spot. We ain't, we ain't disrespectful. But we just letting them know mm -hmm. that, that at this point in time, they're not ready. Because people answering questions like, mm -hmm. are you serious about this? Yes. Um, how, how much do you make a year? I don't really know. Uh, okay, cool. So that means that you're probably not really serious about your financing. And it mm -hmm. might say, can you wire this much money today? And they just ignore that question. Okay, we know you're not ready. Because <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't cost that much. 
It doesn't cost mm-hmm. that amount, but we're just seeing if yeah. when you see something about an investment, you run it. Yeah. Okay, good. So you probably don't want to invest in yourself at this point because people don't realize that just the same thing somebody pay for a nice $7 mm-hmm. course and then you got to pay 3000 for the, the stuff that makes the business work and you're going to stop. So I don't want to even take your money if you're not serious about really going follow through with this. Right. So right. just you answering a question like that. So well, true. there we go. Love it. Does that, is that, did that answer your question? Yes, absolutely. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, no doubt, no doubt. Um, we're, we're, we're good, Nella? We're good. All right, cool. Um, can you teach how to have conviction? Can you teach it? Like, just I don't, I don't, somebody's coming to you and saying, hey, teach me how to have conviction. I can't make you want to <clears> do it. Like, yeah. you, but just you try. Gotta you got to want to do try. it. <laughs> you got to want to do it. Like, that's that might be where some therapy or mindset coaching is yeah. necessary. Mm-hmm. But I can't make you want to do it. I, I, I don't think that conviction can be taught. I may be wrong, but I don't. This is like asking... You know, can you teach somebody how to believe in themselves? Right. I, yeah. I, I can't teach you how to have conviction, but I can give you advice on how to kind of trigger it. So what I do is normally when I, when I first have mentees sign up with me, I automatically make them purchase a vision board. And a vision board was a big factor in my success. So I know it helps a lot of people. And most of the people who follow instructions correctly, even if you're not convicted, if you just follow that instruction, I won't even move on on week two. On week one, I'm making you get the vision board. I'm making you set up your LLC, get a business bank account. But if you didn't do that on week one and we talk about the homework, I'm not going to move on to the next step. So you got to knock it out. So if I get you to do that and have that vision board and write these specific words on the top, like, I'm going to get up and get it every day. Like certain things that I need to see. I said, put that vision board right in front of you where you wake up at. You got to see it somewhere. Like it could be the bathroom over top of the, yeah. the, I don't give a damn. Wherever you got to see it at every day. And if you can lie to yourself every day and you made a promise to yourself and you wrote it down, and you literally can just ignore that, you a bold, per, you a bold person. So yeah. that's kind of a way I can kind of trick them into continuing with their program. So I make them write down a few keywords and then their goals for like the month. And then they have to keep constantly updating it. But I can only hold them accountable while I got them. Yeah. So if they can, if I can get them to develop that habit during the time that we spend time, then they can force themselves to kind of be convicted by seeing something they promised themselves. So that's one technique I use. I do believe that conviction can be learned and developed over time. Yeah. You know, and I think that it's learned and developed over time through doing the work, similar to what you were saying. Right. And the more that you do the work, the more consistent that you are, and over time you begin to experience wins, do you believe in yourself more? Right. You know, and so I like that strategy, actually. You know, just starting small and doing the small things over and over and over again and building upon that. Yeah, it's really a confidence game. That's what we try to get people to get confident. You got to build momentum, get them confident, because literally what we got to realize, even in the mentorship game, These people can get a lot of this information for free. We know this. You can Google and YouTube things, right? But if you don't know what you don't know, how can you Google it? You don't even know what you're supposed to be looking for. So now just think about it like this. They can't, it's facts. Like people be like, I gotta just Google that. Well, you didn't even know to look that up. So the thing about it is as coaches, like we, we, we put ourselves in a position to where we are teaching them things, but they're borrowing our confidence also. Absolutely. So there is a lot of times they use us as a mirror and they'd be like, he can do it. Then he said, I can do it. And then he doubled down and said, go do it. So you can get the information for free. I get, I, I watch videos for hours long sometime on YouTube and stuff. And I swear, I swear I don't got the confidence to just go do it. Now, if I sat next to Dave Shans though, and he showed me his account and he said, yo, look, I did this already. You can go do it too. I'm going to say, I believe you. You, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a borrow your confidence and go do it. But you can't borrow somebody's confidence off of a, a YouTube video. Yeah. They don't know you, never acknowledge you, never talk to you. Didn't say you personally can do it. They yeah. saying anybody can do this, not specifically you. Yeah. But if somebody who I'm mir- trying to mirror says I can do it, I'm borrowing their confidence. So that's where the mental. That's how you can kind of get them to build momentum and then confidence. If we get the confidence out of the way, once you confidence at a low area and you beat that. You're going to be like, I can go to the next level. And then you beat that again? Yeah. Oh, I can go to the next level. So it's just a confidence game. Love it. Love it. All right, we got, uh, two, we got two more uh, missing elements, right? But I want you to throw in the chat, if you will, uh, what are you convicted about? What have you convinced yourself that you are going to accomplish? 
What have you convinced? What have you convinced yourself that you're not going to stop? Just throw it in the chat real quick. I just need to see if there's any people who share a certain conviction. And if you're not convicted, you know what I mean. You'll feel passionate about it today, and then tomorrow you'll feel passionate about something else, and you'll realize, oh, this isn't my passion. And then, and then, they typically bring God into the situation and say, God told me. <laughs> <laughs> I like to say that and just get off it because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go too deep. But first, you're claiming that this is what you're supposed to be doing. And then when it gets hard, you claim that God told you to stop doing what you're doing and do something else. And then you clearly hear that you're supposed to be doing this. Then six months, a year later, you're doing something else. And it, I, I think we put too much blame on whatever our spiritual belief is I've, I've had I've had people tell me and they don't like they don't like they don't like uh, how I approach this conversation sometime but they tell me I'm waiting to hear from God about what I should be doing and I'm not saying that that's not true but I think that gives us an excuse to be lazy. Like we think if we don't go to sleep and wake up with a sticky note on our forehead, signed by the creator, then we just can't do anything. We shouldn't move. But I believe whatever we decide to do, I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be cool. Some people say, I, I did it because... Um, um, I was led to do it, but when you quit, were you led to quit? Or you you understand what I'm saying? It's these mental things that we put together in our head, giving us a reason to stop, giving us an out, and I don't like that. Mm. My thing is if if someone feels spiritually inclined to do something, then that's all the more reason why you got to stick in with it even when it gets difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there's always a reason that you can create. I find myself... Spending too much time away from my family, and this is not God's desire for me. Mm. God knew that when he told you to do it. I would, I would bring his stuff back full circle. For sure. But <laughs> in someone's head, yeah. if we can't make logical sense of it, we'll just come up with a reason yeah. that our, our spiritual belief told us to do something. And I'm just saying, I want to bring some attention to this conversation because some of y'all need to stop it. Y'all need to stop <laughs> lying. I'm not going to point any fingers, but. You feel me? Like, yo, stop. <laughs> stop putting that on the person that you pray to. Okay? Yeah. That's all I'm asking. I think all that right. goes back to coaching, though, too. It's like a trainer. Like, we go to the gym a couple of days straight. You get sore. Then you got all of these reasons why mm -hmm. you ain't going to go back. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if you got a trainer, they're going to be like, get up. Mm -hmm. Do this way. You're trying to do less reps because if you came by yourself, you wouldn't did the whole set. Yeah. That's why coaching is so important. So when you having those doubts in yourself, like you normally would, you got somebody to say, no, no, keep doing it. You yes. got it. That's a normal thing that happens in business. You're, it's not always going to be rainbows and sunshine. Matter of fact, it's just peaks and valleys at all times. Yeah. So it doesn't matter when you got a million, you're going to have the peaks and valleys at a million. You look at, you look at Amazon, you look at all of these companies, Tesla, you're going to see all of these people got customer service. That's because they got problems. They got issues. You're going to see them doing all different types of things that you're going to be doing on a lower scale. So just stick it out. But people, it's the honeymoon phase thing. It's just like yeah. when you get a new job, you happy as hell. You're yeah. like, yo, man, I love the girl on the second floor. She's bad as hell. <laughs> oh, my God, the manager's so cool. Two yeah. months later, you hate going in every single day. Mm -hmm. Same thing, you start a new job, you was excited. Dave just told me how dope it is to start a podcast. Then you start doing the work. Two months later, you don't got a million subscribers, and you're like, man, oh, man. you got every excuse why you shouldn't continue going. Yeah. But in reality, it's just you got to break through that honeymoon phase because yeah. success is boring. I'm just going to be real. Like I've been doing the same exact business for eight years, about to be nine years. It's boring, but that's why I'm successful though, because I can continue to have discipline throughout that whole entire time when everybody else came, left, quit, mm -hmm. started one, had two cars left, and then I'm still here. Yeah, mm -hmm. And that's the reality, but people don't like the boringness of it. They want something exciting every couple months. So as soon as they done off the high, like, oh, it's so dope. I can get richer. I'm not rich yet. I'm going to go ahead and start being a trader now. I'm trading. You know what I mean? You're going to trade for a couple months. Wholesale time, baby. Come on now. Yep. Let's yeah, get it. For sure. And, and that's the reality. And then, yes. We have a quick testimonial from Contemporary Current 
Ooh. the estate sales earlier, she said, the social proof effect is real. My DMs are going crazy about estate sales. Thank you, Jen, for that. Yes, that's what I'm talking about, baby. Yes. Oh. Yes. Man, that's incredible, man. So, yo, this, this is actually one of the, the community things that Mitch talked about. Like, yo, you got to be active in the community. And, like, so show up to these lives. Uh, give, did you do a shoot? You gave a super chat or no? <laughs> okay, she didn't do a super chat. That's cool. She might later. You never know. It's cool. Um, so we got to, listen, take this note, you all. There's always a good reason to quit. There's always a good reason. I'm talking about a really, really good reason. And if you talk to your friends and your family about it, they will back you up. <laughs> That's insane. Won't it? <laughs> that is insane. Come on. They love you. Okay? But if you talk to your mentors or your peer group, they're going to be like, what are you talking about? So we got to find that community, okay? And you have to get a conviction. And some things, hopefully some of these things in your life if you could even think about some of the points in your life where you are super fed up, you got to get this conviction. Okay, I remember these small. Yo, one of the reasons I wanted to be successful was I never, ever wanted to put $5 in my gas tank again. Because mm. it, it was a traumatic situation that happened. I had $10 one day. But I hadn't eaten. And I had like the next day off from work. So I was working at the Cheesecake Factory and, you know, I can go to work and make some money. I had the next day off and I had $10. And I was like, whoa, I need some gas. And then I started to think, whoa, I'm hungry. God. I got to make a decision. I could put this $10 in my gas tank, but that ain't going to make sense. I'm going to have to take five. And I, this is this is back when uh, Wendy's was he still got the dollar the, the menu? Five for five. No, they got the four for Can you still go crazy? Dollar nugget? Dollar fraud? Dollar yeah, the, the, the four no? no, they don't got that no more, but they got the four for four, though. They got the four for four. They got the four for four? Yeah. Man, <laughs> save my life. I was like, okay, here's my big genius plan. I'm going to take $5, put it in my tank. Other $5, I'm going to eat with it. Yeah, I'm going to put it in my stomach. And I'm just going to be at the crib until I got to go to work the day after tomorrow. And I just got to figure out a way to stretch this food. And I can go to my aunt's house and go eat or something like that. I'll, I'll be fine. But that was the defining moment for me. And I remember pumping the gas. And I said to myself out loud, I will never, ever put $5 in my tank again. Mm. This will be the last day I ever, ever put $5 in my tank. Mm. And that just drove me to go hard. I'm like thinking, it's not about like just making money all the time. It's like, yo, what did I do? Why do I keep mismanaging my money mm -hmm. to where I got to make a decision whether I eat or put gas in my tank? Man. From that day, I've never, ever put $5 in my gas tank again. Seven, maybe. I didn't throw a little, I threw a little nine piece in there. Yo, <laughs> they had an old dollar. Five. You know the real Not play. When you really, when you really doing it, you swipe that card credit instead of debit when you got a dollar left <laughs> fill the whole tank up i fell out and i'm telling you i'm really I, my one of my defining moments was when i was at the uh, snaps i was on the food stamps and i'm lying to get more on my food stamp application mm. that's when i knew i was like yo i gotta get busy man this ain't it because bro i'm talking about i didn't swipe the joint credit then I went into the food stand. I'm like, yeah, I ain't got no job, man. I live with my mom. I had to say everything to get that max. I was mm -hmm. like, I'm being creative to get food stamps right now, yo. Yeah. And that's where like I'm I can never go back to that. So that's that was one of my moments. That's that brought out one right there. Think about these moments. And uh, sometimes it just life is just hitting you with the moments, but you don't you don't sit and reflect like, yo, what's up with me right now? What's going on? I I I tell you one that y'all probably wouldn't fight with. Uh my friend used to sell me food stamps. The two for one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Give me 200, I give you 100. Say less. And I had to like get together with them and make it happen and show them the receipt and all that kind of stuff. And at this point, honestly, I was, I was doing okay. Like, I had a store. This is actually 2014. I had a store. And I started thinking to myself, man, this is some real poverty mindset stuff right here. <laughs> it's insane. Now, again, some people, they, they'll take that today. I don't care how successful you are. You'll take it today. But for me, it was just one of them moments like, yo, I, this is, this is a program set up for people 
who are operating in poverty. And I don't operate in poverty. And I don't plan on being in poverty. And the next month, he was like, yo, you want to do it? I just said, no. As much as it pained me. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Scrimps. You get that with the with the crab legs? And listen, $200 went a, lo- went a long way in 2014. That's 10 years ago. Yeah. It went a lot further. Bro, I used to it's have 400 up. on the full stand. 400? Yeah, bro. Good. I had the max. Bro. I know. <laughs> by myself, you know the rule. He's talking by myself. <laughs> you know the rule. You got to have kids. Right. Hey, listen, hold on. I was going hammer, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Just let, let these moments, you all, let these moments affect you for a minute, okay? Um, so we got two more real quick. Uh, conditioning. I would like to know what your conditioning is. How do you stay sharp? How do you how do you stay in the game and how do you stay so good at mm. what you do? What's your convi- what's your conditioning, y'all? I already said mine, you know. I keep myself sharp doing a big purchase. Mm-hmm. That's how I stay hustling cuz if not, if I'm if I feel comfortable, y'all, I'm going to be comfortable. Yeah. But if I feel uncomfortable, I'm going to move around. Yeah. It's just like when you're sitting in a chair and, and you you comfortable, you're going to just you're going to relax a little bit. But when that thing, like, feeling weird, you you adjusting yourself, you moving. So that's how I feel when I, I just got the motion just – and I be doing well. Like, I'm not lying. I be doing – I be doing good. I'm like, I'm going to have a real good month. I'll be like, I killed them. And I look at the bank account, I'll be like, ooh, that your husky. <laughs> but then I just be like, let me go ahead and move it around. So somehow I just hide it from myself. Yeah. I, I got a couple, of like, you know, treasury bills and stuff like that. And I'm like – Lock it down for a year. I'm like, oh, I can't touch that money for a year. Mm-hmm. So I did that, you know, with Navy Fed like five times. Whenever it be getting kind of crazy, and then like I, I, I'll buy a car or something. So I bought two old schools. So if you, I don't know, if, I don't know if you've seen that. Are you renting them or that's just you? Well, come on. Yeah, never mind. I'm sorry. Let's be real. I rent whatever. Anyway, <laughs> 60, I got a '63 uh, Lincoln Continental drop top. That's the Kennedy car, if y'all don't know. And I got the uh, a '64 Impala, red on red. You feel me, West Side. But um, <laughs> but no, I just bought them, and that was uh my Lincoln car was uh it was a, it was a hundred k, and then uh the Impala was like sixty thousand. So yeah. I just bought well, them just because I was like, yes sir, I'm feeling comfortable. <laughs> Not one but two, and yeah. then I was like, oh look at my bank account, I gotta get back, bro. It's busy, so I gotta trick myself. Yeah, how do you keep yourself sharp? What's I, your what's your, your I regimen? keep myself sharp because I train myself spiritually, um physically, um making sure that I'm allocating the proper time and giving everybody what they need in terms of filling their love tank to my husband and my kids. And also making sure that I educate myself through reading books, listening to Mm -hmm. podcasts, and of course, continuing to invest in myself. So like every morning I get up, I have an entire process. I take myself through, I read my Bible, I journal, I visualize, you know, I say the things because sometimes my mindset get in the way too. So let me, Yep. Be intentional about reframing this every single day. Yeah. Every single day I'm pouring into myself to make sure that I'm on the up and up and that I am countering any negative things that try to come. For sure. Right? Um, then I I just started back incorporating strength training, but for the past two, three months, I've been doing four to five mile walks every morning. Mm. And normally on those walks is normally when I talk to my husband as well. You know, so that's part of me taking care of myself. Mm-hmm. So I've, count, I've, I've, I've covered the spiritual, the, the spiritual, the mental, the physical, you know, making sure that my home is taken care of. And I always invest in myself as well. Um, I read books. Like right now I'm reading Necessary Endings by Dr. Henry Cloud. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm also reading um, Marriage is for Punks by Pastor Cal Robinson. Rob- mm-hmm. And so... Um, my thing is, for every business book I read, I'm going to read a book that's going to edify my marriage as good, well good, in order good. to stay balanced. Love it. And, well, I'm, I'm, um, oh, my bad. I mean, <laughs> okay. And, um, yeah. And so, and of course, I invest in myself. So, the last quarter of every year, I always make my decisions for the following year in terms of the events I'm going to go to and the investments that I'm going to make in terms of coaching. Gotcha. Um, not just coaching, but I've even gone back to school. I'm working on my doctorate now in leadership. Right. So that's part of me keeping my iron sharpened as well. Good, good. Hang around them big dogs. Mm-hmm. You hang around. Hey, look, I'm going to tell you all a story. It happened the other day. And I, and my, my students told me that they was glad it happened. 
because I went on a, a, a tear on this coaching call right after. I'm hanging with my homie, right? He showed me his savings account. Not his no, nothing like across the board. You know, we got money all over. This man showed me what was in his savings account. I ain't say nothing. I didn't give up no signs of how I felt, but I felt it. He showed it to me. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm all money in 2024. I'm about to go hard. Because I'm talking about he had it. I mean, he had money in his checking, though. Mm -hmm. But he showed me his savings, and he was killing me. And I said, you know what? Nobody beating me on 2024 at mm -hmm. all. It's going to be it's gonna be ugly this year. But, um, yeah. So hanging around people who make you uncomfortable just based off mm -hmm. of their success, it's like a friendly competitiveness. Yeah. So I, sure. I, I love it. Mm -hmm. But he definitely had me with a little pit in my stomach. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you ever you ever feel it? You'd be like, I'm not supposed to feel like that. Yeah, but I sure. couldn't show him, though, mm -hmm. because I ain't want him to know that he was killing me. Like <laughs> and I know he ain't going to watch this. But he was killing me. I was. I looked at that joint. I said, Oh my God. Man. I had to look to the left. I was like, man, you seen the game last night? It's crazy. <laughs> Congratulations, bro. Keep doing your thing. Uh, well, uh, it's time for 2024. We got to do some conditioning, y'all. And um, we're going to have to start targeting some areas of improvement. So, targeting areas of improvement. I don't know where you're lacking or what you're not super good at, uh, but we got to start targeting those areas of improvement. Somebody throw something in the chat. An area that you have to target in 2024 that you need to get better at. And sometimes there's a challenge of good. Like there's danger in good. Because if you're too good, you may feel that you don't have to be great. Mm. If right. you're too good, you might feel, you might say stuff like practice. Practice? We talking practice? Well, now, I'm not, not saying I, AI wasn't great. He was he that was. good. <laughs> <laughs> but he ain't get no rings. He didn't get no jewelry. He went to the chip, though. He had a dolo he was, with Matt Geiger. He was on a constant decline. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I'm from Philly. I, I'm, I'm, I'm from across <laughs> the bridge, 100%. Yeah, I don't know. AI did what he was Okay, but did. okay. AI was good. Jordan was good. AI was good. Kobe was good. But what would Kobe do after a game losing shot? Come on, we're not having it. We're not playing that game. He was he was good. And I wish he didn't know it. Kobe, Kobe was good. I think the difference is Kobe didn't know how good he was. Because he didn't know that he didn't need to. He'll take a, a, a shot and miss the shot. And he goes to the gym after the game and shoots that same shot a thousand times. Nobody told him that he doesn't need to do that because he's already great. He Kobe. didn't know. So sometimes we're so good at something that we feel like that we don't got to go hard and we don't got to study and we don't got to practice because we lit already. Facts. That's a problem, y'all. So the thing that you're good at, that's, that's why like almost all of the people who are stars in high school or super uh, uh, popular in high school, when they get out in the real world, they think that's going to carry them. And those are the same people that's talking about their glory stories from college. Damn. Their glory stories from high school when I was the man. But there was some, there was, there was some people in, in high school that ain't have it all together. They could never get the girls. And they worked on their body and they worked on their mind. They worked on being lit. And they're like, yo, I'm about, I'm about to show all these people who doubted me, who looked over me in high school. I'm about to go get it. And there is a strength there. Mm -hmm. So we need to start conditioning. I'm not talking to y'all. I am talking to myself. There's some areas that I, I'm good in and there's a problem. I know it. So I need to go back to the basics and start finding people that are way better than me. And then you can realize, yo, you can say, yo, I'm, I'm successful. But that depends on what room you're in. Facts. Depends on what table you're sitting Stomach at. Stomach herder. Bruh, right. <laughs> how you feel like, yo, how do I get by? <laughs> and he, yo, you, and you want to know what's so crazy? The dude who I'm talking about, he be partying all the time. So, you know, I'd be like, I can't, I can't afford to party. It, it really just <laughs> re-solidified that. I, looked at, I was like, yeah, you can afford to party, bro. You can chill like that. I said, like, mm -hmm. I can't chill like that. Yeah, he man. be out blowing cheese and his money is secure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I'm insecure. <laughs> <laughs> like last thing, um, consistency. Hey, look, we're, we'll probably take one more call. Us, uh, we got a call. Oh, we got a question. Oh, let's do it. Man, do it. 
Hi. To, Hello. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. I know I'm in the room, but I felt, I, I felt muted. I felt uh, yeah. muted. My question is with regard to um, excellence and being, you know, being good enough or being better or best or excellent. Is there, are there areas, the two to three of you, are there areas where you feel you can just, you can be just good enough? Or do you have to be excellent in every area oh. in order to, maximize your particular craft and how do you feel about that i don't think you got to be excellent in everything i think one thing that everybody should be excellent in is like delegating or actually knowing what you're not excellent in that because i'm a master delegator i don't look my funnels is fire i don't do funnels i got a team found them on fiverr hired them full time call it a day but if if i need to get graphics done i don't do graphics Find them on Fiverr, hire them mm-hmm. full time, get them out of here. But anything that I need to do, like I don't know how to plan events, I don't know how to do nothing. whatever I don't know how to do, I'm okay with not having to spend the time to get great at that as long as I find somebody that's already great and then put them on, you know, pay them for their services. So that's kind of how I look at it. But I don't think you need to be excellent at everything, but at least good at, really good at that part. I think um, you got to be good at what you're good at. But you got to be the best at something. So you don't have to be the ex- excellent at everything, but there needs to be something that you pride yourself on that you are excellent at. And then just surround yourself with people. I mean, with so, surround yourself with people who are good at the things that you're not. So I'm good at a lot of stuff, but I'm like really excellent at like one or two things. And the things that I'm good at, I'm not even trying to get better. I just want to stay excellent at the thing that I'm excellent at. I can hire my weaknesses or, you know, wrap some sort of system around my weaknesses. So I'm not good at sales, right? So what I'll do is if somebody's asking me for a price to do something, right? Let's just say it's one-on-one coaching. They say, I want you to do this, this, and that, and I want you to go come to my city, and I'll do it. But the the price that I will do it at is going to be very expensive. The problem is... It's hard for me to say it. It's a weakness. So I'm going to tell them, okay, cool. I'm not giving you a price on the phone. Uh, Let me talk to my team, and I'll get back with you. I get the price in my head. I send them an email and let them handle it. You got the information. You'll take the email. This is my proposal. If I say the number, if I say, all right, it's going to be $30,000, they'll hear the fear in my voice. (laughs) <laughs> or if they're like, well, okay, what do you, somebody, yo, somebody hit me yesterday. They wanted something, they wanted something from me. And I was like, it's going to be 15000 And they was like, okay, what all comes with it? I'm like, all right, this is what comes with it. And he said, well, what can you do for 5000 I said, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Insane. And I got off the phone. Hit you with the negotiator <laughs> mode. What about right? 5K? But the fact that I know that selling is not my strength, I'm going to put a, email together with the proposal and send it to you and say, if you have any questions, reach back out. There's no pressure on me anymore. You, you got to deal with that number. I don't want to have to deal with it. So I'm only good at a few things, but the things I'm good at, I want to continue to be excellent at and, uh, recognizing what I'm not good at. I don't try to act like I'm better at certain things. Um, but you know, that's, that's, that's the conditioning. That's the strength training, making sure that my blind spots are covered or if I have to be slightly better at something, I'm doing that. So you don't have to be excellent at everything. No, absolutely not. Yep. All right. Uh, that is your question. Oh, no, I have nothing to add after that. I, both of them summed it up perfectly. Like identifying what you're great at, staying great at that, and then hiring to fill in the weaknesses. Yep. Strong. There we have it. All right. Last one, man. Let's, uh, Let's close this out strong. If you have any questions, we'll probably take another question or two. Send a text message and uh, Nella will give you a call, okay? So the last one is consistency. And uh, consistent consistency for me, this is my formula, consistency creates momentum. Inconsistency kills it. Consistency creates momentum. Inconsistency kills it. And momentum makes success easier and more automatic. So we've got to be consistent. I think we talked about a lot of a lot of stuff, and I think there are some people that are really good. You know where you want to go. You got the coach. You got the community. You have conviction. You're getting better every day. 
it's just that consistent piece. And if you were just to get consistent in 2024, it is up for you. So I, I want to ask my, my friends, what is what keeps you consistent? Because both of y'all have been doing the same thing for a long time. Let's start with you, Josh. I don't want to go back. You don't want to go back. No, <laughs> I don't want to go back. <laughs> you know, I, I don't. I don't want to go back to the classroom. Yeah. You know, I don't want to do that. So I do the things that's going to keep me going in forward momentum. I like being at home, you know, working from home. I like being able to come in the middle of the day, you know, impromptu and just hash yeah. it out and have amazing conversations such as this. I like being able to go to my kids' school have lunch with them, volunteer in the class, and, and do whatever is needed. I like that. Yeah. I want to continue that. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. <laughs> so yeah. if I quit, <laughs> if I quit, what's the alternative if I quit? That's why I ask myself, yeah. what, if, what is the alternative? If I don't want that, then I do what's going to keep me getting more of what I want. Love it. Love it. So that's what keeps me consistent. Which man, Mitch, what keeps you consistent, brother? My expenses. <laughs> <laughs> My yeah, cribs is one. not cheap. <laughs> My lifestyle is not cheap. So if I if I don't be consistent, the castle will fall. Yeah. Or I'm gonna have to do uncomfortable things like sell stuff. But that's what what holds me accountable because and then also it's just my why. So my why is just basically I, I live a lifestyle that a lot of people can't, and I want my family to be able to live the same one, mm -hmm. to be able to at least have that that freedom that I yeah. have. It don't got to be everything I got, but just be able to take their trips that they want, their dream trips. Like, I'm going to go to Jamaica. I can just do that whenever I want. Rewards points. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, just to be able to do things, like, that they always dreamed of. When, like, yo, I, I want to go to Africa yeah. and go. So that's it. So that's my reason why. That's so it, until man. I get that number... Nah, fix. Come on. I'm going to go hammer. It's coming. It's MC, coming. You dig. Listen, take this word with you all. Consistency is the only cheat code. Um, if I can get you to be consistent in 2024, everything is going to change for you. So I want to run through them real quick, real quick, okay? Whatever missing link that you have and you recognize it, you you know it. When we, when we started talking about it, he was like, yup, if I get this one area right, everything is going to change for me. I don't know if it's your clarity. If you are not clear on where you're going, get clear. Okay, fix that one part. Your income is going to double, okay? Coaching, find you a coach. If you fix that part, your business will triple. You got everything else, but you just need some coaching. You need some direction. You need to find a community of people who are doing what you're doing, like-minded, that can really push you to the finish line. You got to have a conviction, Okay, there's got to be something that's pulling you, tying you to success. Conditioning, it's time for some strength training this year, y'all. Whatever it is that you're good at, let's get better at it. Anything that's hindering you about you, you need to start working on that. And it may not be the skill set of sales or marketing. It could be your, your, your anger, your temper. It could be your uh, ability to listen. I don't know. It could be, I don't know. I don't know what it is for you. It could be how you communicate. We need to work on this stuff. We need to be getting better every single day. And uh, lastly, consistency. Let's fix that, and uh, we're going to be all right. So, man, listen, y'all. I Thank y'all for coming. First of all, thank y'all for coming, man. Problem. Uh, my only entrepreneurial friends in Atlanta that's not in Ghana right now with Rashad and Troy and all of them. <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> it's like all of Atlanta just picked up and went to Ghana. Where y'all going? Like, dang. <laughs> So, um, yes, man, thank y'all so much. Uh, let everybody know how they can find you. And I need y'all to do me a favor. As they start sharing how, they, how you can communicate with them, at least, at least send them a DM saying thank you. Okay? If you didn't give no super chat, you can at least say thank you. <laughs> Especially if you didn't get no super chat, you can hit that little like button. Okay? You get that little like button. Um, but yes, man, reach out to them on their DM on Instagram. Now I was going to put it up as they talk, but make sure you make sure you at least say thank you, especially if you've been here for three hours. So um, push me and Mitch, let everybody know how to connect with you and uh, leave us, leave us, uh, take us out with a word of wisdom. Oh, Lord. All right. Uh, Y'all can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Pushman Mitch. 
website, thepushman.com. If y'all want to shoot me a DM, shoot me a DM with the word new. Why? Because next year is going to be new year, new you. New year, same me, just more money. But I want to make sure y'all hustle harder than y'all ever did before. Make sure y'all take advantage of every opportunity like never before. Make sure y'all show up for yourself and y'all family like y'all never did before. Make sure if those who be saying things like I'll go broke for my family, make sure y'all get rich for them too. Mm. There it is, there it is. Jess! Hey, you can find me at the Jasmine Womack on Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Sh- definitely shoot me a DM. You can also text the word hashtag author to 404 341 for a special gift. And listen, make the next year your best year. You know, put your faith first and go for it. I love it. I love it. Listen, you all, now's the time. I know, I know. If we hit that little, if that part, where you're saying, I need a community is missing. I need you to make a commitment right now and rock with me for the next 12 months, okay? We are going to be on a call every day, Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I am going to coach you through this journey, okay? You you need a, and, and not, even, not even me, we have some amazing people in the community right in your city. So a bunch of meetups, I'm traveling to y'all cities this year, um, themorningmeetup.com make a commitment be a part of our family it's only $4.99 for the entire year okay so go to themorningmeetup.com uh, if you are a uh, your advocate on YouTube uh, hit the little if you look above hit that little join button you could be a member we put out exclusive content on a regular basis uh, throughout the week as a member. we got a lot of cool stuff going on. Everybody that supported with Super Chats, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to a school. We're going to give away some money on the 8th. So we appreciate you all uh, putting a seed in the ground. I'm telling you, this is good ground, and we appreciate all the support. All right? Next week, we'll be back every Friday at noon. Free smoke. Drop, hit some little buttons, man. Let's, yeah, free there smoke, we go. free smoke. There we go. There free we go. Smoke, free smoke. All right, y'all, we out of here, man. We love you. Have an amazing weekend. Peace.